Welcome to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. You're watching the NCAA Regionals presented by Capital One. Game six of potentially six, potentially seven in our Chapel Hill Regional. Top seed in North Carolina can advance to the Super Regionals with a win. Tennessee needs to win to force a game seven. The second seeded volunteers are here on the heels of a 10 inning 6 5 thriller over Liberty earlier today. They face North Carolina, who's 1 2 in this regional final. Kevin Brown, JP, Aaron Zebia. The Volunteers need to win two games. They need to win today to force a game seven Monday. They are here because of an amazing roller coaster ride over Liberty. They're a little more taxed, though. North Carolina comes in the fresher team. You say amazing roller coaster ride. I feel like for Tennessee, it's probably a draining roller coaster ride. A roller coaster of emotions. That first game was very crazy. UNC, though, I'm sure was enjoying watching that game, going to extra innings, use a lot of pitching. Again, emotional roller coaster. Didn't think it would be an extra inning game for a little while. Tennessee led going into the ninth. And then things got wacky. Liberty loaded the bases. And then Logan Matthew was hit by a Redmond Walsh pitch. Tie score, bases loaded, nobody out. Will Wagner a rip right to first. And then Cam Locklear bounced back to Walsh, who starts the 1 2 3 double play. That took us to the 10th, where with two on and two out, freshman Jake Rucker delivered the game winning hit. And Jake Rucker, a freshman, like you said, has been huge this regionals. Freshmen in general have been huge this regionals. You see the no, 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 the Kembe Matumbo right there. And UNC has a freshman of their own and some power of their own. Aaron Sabato, one of five North Carolina players to Homer yesterday in a 16-1 bludgeoning of Liberty. It was Harris, McGee, Bush, Sabato after this. North Carolina, one of the best power hitting teams in Tar Heel history. You know, what's fun to watch is a team that hit home runs at this rate with the new bats. This is about as many home runs as people have hit in a long time with the new BB Core style bat. You see Aaron Sabato, one of the top power hitters in the country, and Michael Bush as well, who's going to be hearing his name here in the first round uh, coming tomorrow. Bush and Sabato, the one-two hitters again for the Heels, who are looking to return to the Super Regional for the second straight year. First pitch, next. What's in your wallet? From the beautiful campus of the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, the Moorhead Patterson Bell Tower. Campus symbol built in 1930 that overlooks us today. Here at the Bosch, UNC once again the visiting team in this regional. And the Tar Heels will have the likely first rounder tomorrow night, Michael Bush, play in front of Aaron Sabato, the freshman, the two All-ACC players. Danny Ceretti, Ike Freeman have had strong moments in this regional as well. Homers for McGee, Harris, and Martorado yesterday. Caleb Roberts and then Dallas Tesser, who also homered in the regional. That was on Friday. Matchup of two pitchers who have been drafted twice. Zach Lingenfelter, 19th round pick of the Nationals last year, 16th round pick of the Yankees in 2016. The 6'5 junior gets the start in game four for Tennessee. And you see here 91 to 93 mile hour fastball. It can touch all the way up to 95, 96. It all depends on which Zach Lingenfelter you're going to get. At times dominant, at times erratic. And he's facing a tough lineup today. You ready? Born ready. Let's do it. Regional final. Game one of potentially one or one of two. And we begin with a strike at 6.06, 86 degrees. Lingenfelter to Michael Bush. The Tennessee native Zach Lingenfelter, who has not made it past the fifth in his last four starts. But a good start here, a second pitch pop-up to Alaric Solari in left. Michael Bush now three for 11 in the regional. Solari, Jay Charleston, Justin Ammons in the outfield for Tennessee. The great defender on the infield, Ricky Martinez, the shortstop. And the freshman, Connor Pavoloni. Trying to shake off a key error in the ninth inning in the first game. Tennessee did work around it. Win the game in 10. Pavoloni, though, largely reliable behind the plate in his first year. Aaron Sabato, North Carolina designated hitter. 
Sabato has homered in three consecutive games including both Carolina games in this regional his two hits in the regional have been home runs. He's also walked four times. Strike two quickly from Lingenfelter. The numbers are gaudy. Aaron Sabato broke the UNC freshman home run record yesterday, breaking Chad Flack's record of 15 in 2005. One and two. Also, Gaudi was watching his power in batting practice, routinely putting the ball over the net in left field. There's about a 40 foot net in left field, and he was hitting it over with ease in batting practice. This is one of the more special freshmen in the country. Sabato checks his swing on one two. He did not go. The umpires today, Darren Hyman has the plate. That's Rick Allen at first. Darren Budan at second, and Sean Rakos at third. Twenty four straight games on base for Aaron Sabato. Ready for a two two. And he rockets it to left field. Make it twenty five straight on base. A one out single for the Carolina DH. And this is why he's so special. Zach Lingenfelter throws him two sliders in a row. You know he's going to come back with a fastball. Comes back with a fastball and absolutely hits a rocket. Short compact swing right there. Draft eligible sophomore. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of teams lining up to sign or draft Aaron Sabato. That'll be next year when he is eligible after this freshman year. 6 2 2 30 Sabato is on now Danny Ceretti North Carolina has freshman batting second and third. And Ceretti takes a strike. Danny Ceretti one for seven three walks two strikeouts and the regional. Base hit a couple of runs scored yesterday walked as well in the 16 to one route of Liberty. On the ground, Ceretti goes the other way. Back-to-back -back base hits in the first for Carolina. Danny Ceretti, the entire tournament has looked under control. He looks under control again. That at bat, taking what's given, not trying to do too much. And the, the home run hitting team is going single-single out of the gate. A little small ball. Here. Here's Ike Freeman. Another fired up crowd here at Boshamer Stadium. North Carolina with a 7 6 win over UNC Wilmington. Two runs in the ninth to walk it off on Friday. Took a 2 0 lead into the sixth inning yesterday and then blasted Liberty from there for the 16 1 win. Ike Freeman takes ball one. It kicks away from Pavaloni. Sabato to third, Ceretti to second. And the Diamond Heels have a pair in scoring position already. Looked to be a fastball right there. You see Connor Pavoloni. Thought it was going to be in the dirt. Did not hit the dirt. Got caught up. Should go down as a pass ball. And, you know, as a freshman, these situations are tough. Right now, really got to bear down back there. Zach Lingenfelter. He's got really good stuff, so it makes it tough on a catcher. Infield is back. And Freeman hits a dribbler foul. Mike Freeman, three out of five in this regional. He's doubled. He's walked four times and been hit by a pitch. That ruling, by the way, is a wild pitch, though it did seem to hit the glove of Pavaloni first. Yeah, it's uh, friendly. I, I would have taken it as a catcher, but sometimes when you turn the glove over, glove over, it looks like it's a wild pitch. Should have been caught. Two in scoring position either way. Freeman, the junior at a Rockwell, North Carolina, has been terrific. Now been changed to a pass ball for those of you keeping score at home or interested parties, and that's the right call. Maybe they were listening in. No doubt. <laughs> Two and one for Freeman here in the first. 
That's ball three. Zach Lingenfelter's first two seasons, ERA is at 367, 393. That number has jumped to 516 this year. And his last four starts, he's allowed 17 runs, 16 earned, in just 15 innings. He's got to be smart right here. This base open. I know there's a lefty on deck, but still, may see a slider right here. Instead, a fastball just above the dirt, and North Carolina has loaded the bases. No harm done, though. I, I, I'm okay with that because of the double play. You always got to know as, as a pitcher, you have that base open. And we get a quick visit. Frank Anderson, Tennessee pitching coach, after 14 pitches. Bring his infield together and speak with Zach Lingenfelter. If you're just seeing Tennessee for the first time in this regional, you're seeing one of the great assistant coaches in the country, Frank Anderson. He's pitching coach under Augie Garrido in the early 2000s, has a national championship with Texas, longtime head coach, and a successful tenure at Oklahoma State as well. Bases are loaded for North Carolina's second baseman, Ashton McGee. He got in on the fun yesterday with this mighty two-run home run. And what a great swing right there, so balanced. It almost looks like he, like he hits it in with one hand because he caught it out in front so much. That swing was really, really nice, and that's why he hit that ball far. But right here in Tennessee, you have to make sure you want to throw a strike, but you can't be too aggressive with a fastball right here because... We all know what kind of power Ashton McGee possesses. First pitch. Ball one. And that's why you see you throw a changeup right there. No? You know what? Changeups sometimes are okay because you slow the pitcher down. It allows you to really slow your mechanics and get you back in the zone. McGee drove in four runs yesterday. Two run homer and a two run single. Fouled away one and one. Small sample size, but Ashton McGee, five for ten this year with the bases loaded. That includes one grand slam. Well, as a hitter, when you're hitting and the bases are loaded, the pressure's on the pitcher. He has nowhere to put you. Less than two outs. You're looking for something to drive. It's very, very relaxed at bat, actually, for the hitter. And again, the pressure is all on the pitcher here. 1-1 one, one from Lingenfelter, and that misses a little bit high. 2-1. and one. Aston McGee, two years ago, the ACC Freshman of the Year, has had some ups and downs since. North Carolina hopes he is swinging a hot bat at the right time. Sabato, Soretti, and Freeman, the runners. Ball three gets away from Pavoloni, but Sabato decides not to advance. Soretti was about halfway to third, but he retreats. Wow. The, the old turf monster got him right there. Thankful for Tennessee. But still, 3-1 count. Ashton McGee's in the driver's seat right here. and Lingenfelter hasn't been... Very consistent with his location. If I'm Ashton McGee, I'm looking for something middle in the drive. Really zero in and know that Zach has been all over the place. On 3-1, McGee takes aim and Lingenfelter takes something off it. <laughs> Pretty good pitch right there. I'll tell you what, 3-1, base is loaded. Throw a little slider right there. That's... That takes a lot and also messes with the hitter because now after throwing it 3-1, 3-2, you never know what can happen. Does he go back to it? Does he go to fastball? 
20th pitch of the first on 3-2. Another off speed right there. So now you've seen a 3-1 slider. You've seen a 3-2 off speed. What's McGee thinking? Well, I mean, if I'm hitting right here, I have to realize that his fastball has been ball most of the at bat and he's throwing his off speed because he feels like that's what he can throw for a strike so there's a good chance that he's going to come back with it but you still have to stay on the fastball just in case ground ball through sabato scores so ready waved home he will score north carolina strikes first ashton mcgee's third two-run hit of the weekend and the Diamond Heels have the first two of the first. And after those two off speed, Ashton McGee gets a fastball, hits it right back up the middle. And I'm sure that now he's happy that Sabato may be tripped because that's a two RBI single for him. Nice of the turf monster to help pad your stats. <laughs> I don't think there would have been two runs scored anyways. Dylan Harris, another home run hitter from yesterday. Harris has had a superb regional. Four out of nine. He's doubled, he's homered, he's walked. And look at that hometown. This might be a little extra special for Dylan Harris, the Knoxville, Tennessee kid. One and one, 95 there from Lingenfelter, who can certainly rear back and throw it. Freeman and McGee, the runners, here in the first. And a throw behind Freeman, who is safe. Ricky Martinez tried to sneak in. I asked Tony Vitello before the game, said, hey, how does Dylan Harris come to North Carolina when he's in Knoxville? And he had committed to North Carolina two weeks after they had been hired as a staff. And, you know, right back there in Walter State in their backyard, I guess, they were not told about Dylan Harrison. Here he is in UNC. They like him right now. Here comes Freeman around third. Ammons throw cut off. The one that got away, Dylan Harris, gives the heels a third run in the first. In North Carolina, the power hitting team has become the singles hitting team, but with runners in scoring position, scoring some runs, setting the tone right now. And about half of the Tennessee Volunteers just jogged out to the bullpen. There's a traveling party led by Will Heflin and Andrew Schultz. Brandon Martirano. This is going to sound like a broken record, but he hit a home run yesterday. Martirano started to go. The ball gets away from Pavoloni. A second pitch that gets away in the inning. There was a pass ball. This is a wild pitch. McGee to third, Harris to second. And we talked about it at the beginning of the game. Zach Lingenfelter has some big time stuff. The problem is, is the location of the big time stuff. Gets behind and counts. Hitters can be aggressive. Missing wide with breaking pitches like that. It's tough for the catcher. But if you're Tennessee, definitely not the way you wanted the game to start right here. Especially because this is Tennessee's fourth game of the weekend, North Carolina's third. Garrett Crochet and Redmond Waltz each threw three and two-thirds innings in the first game. Can't imagine we'll see either of them. Late cut by Martirano there, strike two. No doubt, and when you go out there in the first inning, Tennessee was on the field for quite some time during the game against Liberty. The last thing you want is to be on defense for this long to start the game. 
Need a big pitch right here. Probably want to throw something in the dirt. Need a strikeout. Infield is back. Two and two. It's tough too as a catcher. Once you have a couple balls like that during an inning, you get defensive back there. And right there, you saw a changeup in Pavloni kind of very aggressive with it, popping out of his glove. It's a tough position to be in because now those runners are in third base. So you, you become, instead of that relaxed catching the ball easy, you're tense. 2 2 is fouled away late. Look at the pitch count already. This next one will be the 30th for Lingenfelter, the first. Was there a number that concerned you as a catcher when a pitcher threw X number of times in an inning? I mean, not early, not in the first inning, but you just know if he does get out of this, that there's probably not a few, there's not much left in him unless, you know, he has some quick innings, but. 2-2. Two, two. Way over the head of Martorano. It was so high that it bounced off the backstop to Pavoloni in a reasonable amount of time, and the runners have to hold. That backstop is... Uh... Very valuable right here. Come right back to the catcher. Wow. Just seems to me like Zach Lingenfelter, he's, he's so jacked up right now. He's trying to find the zone, trying to make it happen. You see right there. 3-2. And he got Martirano. Diving pitch down and away, a huge second out. But that's what Zach Lingenfelter is. He, he has good stuff as a hitter. It's almost unfair. You get one thrown over your head, and then the next pitch is a breaking ball right down the middle. Sometimes it's called effectively wild. That's exactly what that was right there. Caleb Roberts, the eighth batter of the inning for North Carolina. Takes ball one. Freshman out of Coral Springs, Florida. St. Thomas Aquinas High School. No wait yet. 33 hits, but 26 walks. And Roberts might not swing for a couple of pitches right now. Nice block right there by Connor Pavoloni. Yeah, but you, you know, you were asking me about was, was there any pitch amount that I'd get worried about. It's more thinking about who am I gonna who's gonna come in next who am I gonna have to catch next hard foul ball strike one Tennessee bullpen is active already in the first will Heflin we have seen each of the first two days of this regional An inning and a third on Friday one inning yesterday 35th pitch of the inning from Lingenfelter. Way high. Here comes the runner, McGee. He scores. That one did not get the friendly bounce off the backstop. It's a run scoring wild pitch. If I'm Tennessee, I'm not throwing any more fastballs. Pitch before, a strike with a breaking ball. He struck out Martirano with the breaking ball. Fastball up right there, 95. Got to be able to figure out what pitch you can throw for a strike at this point. I don't care if you have to throw a 3-0 slider for a strike. It's just got to be a strike. That's going to be Lingenfelter's last pitch on a 3-1 count. Here is Tony Vitello. Zach Lingenfelter, who's got a big right arm, he's going to be drafted on Tuesday in all likelihood for the third time. But he did not have the command of the first. And North Carolina has four. Balls to the bullpen in the first when we return. Three days, the first two have been strong. Two and a third, two hits, two unearned runs, a walk, six strikeouts. 
Didn't expect you'd see him in the first inning, but Zach Lingenfelter has taken out after four runs with a 3 1 count on Caleb Roberts. And the balls are going to need some innings at a Heflin. Yeah, and if there's anyone that's excited right now, it's Connor Pavoloni. He was on skates back there. It's tough when you have 95, 96 everywhere, sliders in the dirt, sliders off the plate. And the silver lining is this is Austin Bergner, starter for UNC, has been sitting in that dugout for a while. Now he has to go back down there. So that's got to be tough for Austin to be able to lock it back in and get ready to pitch whenever he has to pitch because there's still two outs and 3-1 count. And the first pitch from Heflin. There's a strike to Roberts, 3-2. and two. Runner at third is Dylan Harris. And Heflin just misses with a curveball, ball four. Second walk of the inning for North Carolina, and the nine hitter Dallas Tesser will bat. The zones have been a little tough today, but tough position to come into. The 3 1 count. And that walk, by the way, is charged to Lingenfelter, who threw the first three balls. So Dallas Tesser. North Carolina sent nine batters to the plate in the seventh and eighth innings yesterday. And Tesser lays out bunt, and it's foul. And Andre Lipsius was playing pretty far back. So if that's a bunt, that's fair. Might be looking at a 5-0 to zero game. Now, Andre's going to respect it. If you believe in good omens, and if you're involved in baseball, you likely do. North Carolina is 10 and 1 when Dallas Tesser starts. In a great ACC tournament. He had not played much until the ACC tournament. North Carolina was so bad defensively in the final weekend series against NC State that Mike Fox wanted a stronger defensive lineup, put Tesser in the right field. And he now has a hit. In six games in a row, a career high. And a huge blow in game one over the wall there two, in left field. Early two run homer in that game. Fouled away. Roberts was on the move from first. Look, North Carolina's putting pressure on still. It's 4 nothing in the first, but Austin Bergner only lasted an inning and a third. Last week in the ACC tournament, so the heels know they know what Tennessee's offense is capable of. Every run here is an important one, and there's a lot of game left. Tennessee hasn't even had an at bat yet, so never know what can happen. Baseball's crazy. We saw UNC put up in three innings, they put up a ton of runs. If UNC is going to steal a bag here, Tennessee has to understand, which I imagine Connor Pavoloni going out there and putting out, putting the signs is to shut down the throw to second base because 0-2 count, UNC is looking to steal a run right there, have a throw to second base, and send that runner in from third. Roberts is on the move. Here we go. Tennessee's not going to throw down to second. Peter K hung on to the ball. There was a late cover of second as well, but Der did not want to get Roberts in a rundown and risk Harris scoring. Yeah, which for me, that was a weird play. I imagine the infielders are staying back because we weren't throwing through or Tennessee wasn't throwing through, but again, doesn't matter. The whole reason that play was going to happen was because they wanted the runner on third base, Dylan Harris, to run home. 0 2. And it doesn't matter now as Heflin strikes out Tesser. Heflin gets out of the first. Five home runs yesterday for North Carolina. In the first, four singles and four runs. Big early lead for the Heels.
16 runs in the last two games of the regional for the Tennessee Volunteers after just one in their first game. Got more production from the top. Justin Ammons and Jay Charleston were both two for five in the win over Liberty. Andre Lipsy has hit a tie-breaking two-run home run in that game. He and Al Solari, the two best hitters on this Tennessee team, three and four. And Jake Rucker jumps back ahead of Ricky Martinez in the sixth spot after his game-winning hit. Austin Bergner drafted in 2016 by the Red Sox, drafted last year by the Diamondbacks. But the ERA is high. He's been erratic this season, particularly in his last two starts. Ten runs, eight earned over four and two-thirds in his last two outings. He does have a cushion. Bergner to Justin Ammons. And a first pitch, strike one. A fastball from the 6'4", 200 junior. You see there with the short arm, Austin Bergner, he's up to 94. He can throw the ball hard. He's a fastball curveball guy with a change up at times. But like Lingenfelter, you have phenomenal stuff. You still have to be able to dominate the zone with it in Tennessee. Right now you're down 4-0. They just have to worry about chipping away. Not trying to get it all at once. Two and one for Justin Ammons. The junior out of Memphis. Three out of 14 in this regional. And a pop-up left side will get out of play. Justin Ammons has been Tennessee's leadoff batter when healthy. He was not healthy two weeks ago. Hurt his right wrist after being hit by a pitch against Ole Miss. Did not play last weekend. The Vols were happy to have him back. He had really been hitting the ball well toward the end of the year. 2-2 from... Austin Bergner kicking off the home first. And Ammon stays alive. It's so amazing to watch these college games. You you know, we're in the third game for UNC, the fourth game for Tennessee. You have Tennessee starter up to 97 that first inning. You have Austin Bergner, who's a low to mid-90s kind of guy. It's just college baseball is crazy to see how far it's come. That's grounded foul. Michael Bush leads the all dive team on foul balls. He's been making some great plays on foul balls. He this really regional. is. He'll be a first round pick. We'll hear Michael Bush's name called tomorrow. North Carolina first baseman. I'd be interested to see if, if a team will draft him as an outfielder. I think he's athletic enough to play in the outfield and give him a chance because at first base he does have a very very powerful bat but at first base you, know, you look at the major leagues that's a, a position where you're hitting 300 plus with 30 plus home runs if you can do what he can do in the outfield that's on the ground to second Ashton McGee makes the play one away seven pitch at bat to start it for Bergner Good infield defense with Bush at first base. Ike Freeman moved from shortstop to third this year when Danny Ceretti came in, the true freshman. Dylan Harris will track down just about everything in center. And the Iron Man behind the plate, Brandon Martirano, has started 61 of now 62 games this year for North Carolina. Here's Jay Charleston. One of the stolen base leaders in the nation. He was ninth coming into the weekend. He's already swiped a couple of bags. Now 40 out of 44 on the year. The question, can he get on base? Average of 219 on base of 317. And a strike one and one. And I'm sure he feels good after a couple hits in the first game to have the opportunity to keep on hitting. When this guy gets on base, it is electric to watch him run you know who else stole 40 bases in a Tennessee uniform 
Who's that? He's uh, currently on, in Louisville in, with ESPN. Now do you know who I'm talking Would about? Would that be our own Chris Burke? Chris Burke it is. Bunch showing on 2-1, ball three taken. You didn't have any 40 base dealers near there? Julio didn't get 40? Julio did not get 40. Julio Bourbon we're talking about. Julio is one of the fastest guys that I've ever seen, but he did not get 40 stolen bases. Tells you about the speed of Jay Charleston, who's got a 317 on base and still has 40 steals. If he gets on, he's going. Boy, and he takes a strike. What it shows, too, is speed is not everything. You have to have the instincts. You have to have the jumps. Now you can be fast, but if you don't get good jumps, you're going to get thrown out. So Jay's baseball IQ also up there. Chris Burke's numbers, though, were insane his junior year. I mean, he hit close to 400. Home runs, stolen bases. Nice career with the Houston Astros. Hit a big home run in the playoffs. Three two for Charleston from Bergner. Got him on a diving fastball strike three. Nothing special about that. That was just three two. Here you go. Coming at you. Boom. Jay Charleston with the swing and the miss. Little sinking action there at the end, but Andre Lipsius, likely to be the first Tennessee player to hear his name called on Tuesday. Rounds three through ten of the draft. Had been just one four nine in the regional, but perhaps he broke out in the first game of the day, three for five with a two run home run in the fifth. Gave Tennessee a five three lead. Vols would win six five. Extra pause there for Bergner in the middle of the delivery. And he pours over a strike. Well, you see Andre Lipsius looking back at the mound with a little smile because he did have a little bit of a pause there, and that's become more of a thing. You see it now in the major leagues. College pitchers are adapting to it, trying to disrupt hitters' timing. Trying to tail the fastball over the outside corner and just missed. It is tough as a hitter. It is tough to adjust to that, but the reason why not everybody does that is because it's tough to control as a pitcher. When you're changing your timing, it's inconsistent. That can make your pitches inconsistent. Who did you catch that did that? Marcus Stroman, who really likes to do that. Quick pitches, Jason Frazier, a reliever with us. There's, there's a lot of different ways you can disrupt timing, and I feel like now it's becoming more of a on-the-leg kick. 2-2. Two -two. Strike three. What a first inning for Bergner. Shut down frame for the Carolina righty. We're here in the Chapel Hill Regional. North Carolina, the number 14 overall seed. The number 15 overall seed is done. Bryce Blom of Texas A&M hit a 3-2, two, two out, bottom of the ninth, grand slam. And the Aggies stun West Virginia 11 to 10 to advance to the regional final with Duke. That is every kid's dream, right? Oh, man. That's what you practice in the backyard. 3 2, 2 out, bottom of the ninth. Walk off salami, and the Aggies are still swinging. Well, and at least imagine it, which, again, baseball's a crazy game. That's why 4 0 in the top of the second. Anything can happen in this game. There's a lot of game left. So in the Morgantown regional, it is SEC versus ACC, Texas A&M, Duke, SEC, ACC here, and in both cases, the ACC team has won the first two. A&M will need to win tonight and then beat Duke tomorrow to advance to the Super Regionals. 15 overall seed, that regional's winner is matched up with the Vanderbilt Regional. Vandy, the number two seed, and one win away from advancing in its bracket. Four pitch walk for Michael Bush. Will Heflin back on the mound for Tennessee, and he puts on Bush to start the second.
not the way you want to start the inning with the four pitch walk. You got Aaron Sabato coming up. The second half of the Bass Brothers. Freshman record holder. And he's happy to have that piece of quote unquote lumber in his hands. He's got his bat back, Aaron Sabato. We were talking with Aaron at the cage the other day. Ashton McGee apparently used one of his bats and it exploded on a swing. Yeah, it broke. Which is extremely rare, of course, in the college game. So Sabato's got his bat back. What was he saying to you on Friday at the cage? Yeah, he said, I got my baby back as soon as it came out of inspection. They inspect all the bats now. They inspect all the bats to make sure that there's no dents. There's certain things that they, they look for. And as soon as it came out of inspection, they brought it right to him. And they said, hey, here's your bat. He was like, my baby is back. And you could tell that that, I mean, it made a huge difference. He then proceeded to hit about 10 batting practice, no doubt, home runs. And oh, by the way, he's homered in the first two games of this regional. Two and one from Will Heflin. Yeah, he was uh, hitting moon shots. It almost looked like eight irons and just way out of this park. High. Majestic home runs. A chopper to the left side. Andre Lipsius, his only play is at third. Shockingly, Sabato has put the ball in play twice, which he had done only once in his first nine trips to the plate. Two homers, four walks, two strikeouts. He's singled and grounded out as Bush takes second. Now Danny Ceretti, one of the four North Carolina singles, two walks as well in a four-run first inning. Member of the All-ACC freshman team out of Berkeley Heights, New Jersey. Ceretti batted from the left side against Lingenfelter in the first, now bats right-handed against Teflon. You see it a lot in the college game. You see it a lot in the pro game. When there's a runner on second base, you have to switch up your signs. You have to use different sequences. You'll see Connor Pavoloni right there do the taps and then give a sign. He's usually going, if he touches the chest protector, first it could be first sign. If he touches the mask first, it could be second sign. You have to switch it up because when you have a runner on second base, if they know what your signs are, they relay it to the hitter. It can end up being very tough. 2-0 and on Ceretti, and a strike, good breaking ball from Heflin. And very tough for the pitcher. I've been back there as a catcher when the runner at second base is relaying signs, and I picked it up late, and I picked it up after that they had scored three runs. You know, it, some guys are good at it, some guys are not, but it can make a big difference in a game. Grounded to short, Ricky Martinez, and Bush has to hold it second. You know who was one of the best sign stealers in the American League East? I was thinking about asking, but I didn't know if you would reveal that. No, I'll reveal it because he's pretty special. Derek Jeter was one of the best. And he would be out there and he'd be tugging at his helmet, you know, one way or the other, and that was location. Certain things that he was doing, he was just so good. And I'd watch him, I'd put down signs, and I'd watch and I'd see what he would do. But the, the New York Yankees were good at it. They were a veteran team, and they really, really knew how to relay signs. Mike Freeman, strike one. Did that bother you as a catcher? Well, you, it doesn't. Uh, I have to do a better job of giving signs. The problem is, is there's so much information. Even in college, you can watch the catcher give signs on TV. And so if you watch it enough, I can kind of come up with what their sequences are, and New York used to do that. And you'd always have to be constantly changing signs. Freeman did not hold up. Strike two, according to Rick Allen at first. Wonder how much of that is seen as gamesmanship, how much of that is seen as 
stealing, how much of that is seen as just a part of the game? Yeah, I think it's part of the game. And if you set up early as a catcher with a runner on second base and they tip your location, you have to do a better job of masking it. It's just it's a cat and mouse game. That's that's how it works. Bush the rudder at second. Just touched the helmet, whether or not that means anything, with his left hand. And Freeman taps it foul, and he got a piece of Pavaloni. Well, if you watch this, you're talking about setting up late. You'll watch Connor. He'll flash his glove away because he doesn't want to set up there and then hop to that position. That's all because of not allowing the hitter to see where I'm setting up the runner on second base. Not being able to relay it. Those are the little game. That's the game within the game that's fun to watch. One, two. And that's grounded off the line. You can see there, Bush, the last couple of times he has reached out his left arm. He has pointed with the index finger. Is that a relay of the sign, or is that just some kind of tick for Bush? Yeah, sometimes guys take leads and they have their arm out there. And you just It's just a, a comfort thing. It's not, not necessarily. But, you know, you can do certain things as a catcher to set it up, too, right? I can set up out, outside early and see if he does, if he reacts to it. Then I know what he's trying to do. You can deke a lot of guys, too. Two and two. Sometimes as a catcher, you set up early inside on purpose to a right-handed hitter from a lefty pitching. And most of the times, you know, dugout, whoever's relaying it may say turn on it or coming in. And I do that early on purpose because I was throwing a back foot slider. You know, you're able to deke hitters and teams. Bush dives back into second on a stare down from Heflin. Michael Bush led off the inning with a walk. Two ground outs have followed. Will Heflin came on in the first inning, relief of Zach Lingenfelter. And he has gone 3-2 on Freeman after getting ahead 0-2. Yep, 3-2 count, bases, or man op base open at first base. You have a lefty on deck, Nashon McGee. So you gotta be smart right here. He's missed arm side with fastballs. Maybe you throw a, a breaking ball which will make him finish it a little bit better for a strike. And then, again, if you walk him, you have a lefty on deck. 3-2. On the ground, too short. Martinez, after the runner Bush had crossed, makes a smooth play. Three ground outs in a row. A scoreless second for Will Heflin. Our ESPN Family of Networks brings you every game on the road to Omaha, starting with regional coverage on ESPN2, ESPNU, right here on SEC Network and ESPN3. Whip Around coverage is also available through ESPN3 and the Bases Loaded channel. All coverage is available on the ESPN app. We had the Bases Loaded channel on in between games today, and Man, there were so many fun games happening today. Southern Miss just eliminated Arizona State 13-12 in Baton Rouge in the LSU Regional. They just walked off the ninth. A&M a walk-off Grand Slam. They beat West Virginia 11-10. Dallas Baptist had a 9-2 lead on Florida. Gators came all the way back but fell short 9-8. Anything you can see on a baseball field just about, you're going to see today in this regional round, day three. Al Solari, the cleanup hitter for Tennessee. One and one against Austin Bergner. Two for 11, three walks in the regional for Solari. And a fastball, low ball, two. What a spectacular season for this young man. I was just about to say, coming from junior college to put up the numbers that he's put, it's not very common. 
not that junior college, not to take away from junior college, but just to come into the SEC is a completely different ball game. Osolari has almost gotten better in the SEC, it feels like. First team all conference player. And he fouls a 3 1 pitch away. J.J. Blade and Austin Martin of Vanderbilt are the only two players in the conference with a better on base percentage and a better slugging percentage than Solari. He is third in both categories. And Blade should be a top five pick tomorrow. So it's pretty good company. 3 and 2 to the Houston native. Solari. Takes ball four. Lead off walk. First base runner for Tennessee. Austin Bergner will work out of the stretch for the first time. He'll face Evan Russell. Sophomore designated hitter. Lexington, Tennessee native at a Scotts Hill High School in Reagan, Tennessee. And a strike might have been framed there. Nice pullback by Martirano. 0 and 1. Yeah, Brandon Martirano has done a great job behind the dish. And you see right here the old analytical approach. UNC is very analytically driven. They uh, use a student by the name of Michael, Micah Daly Harris, who has just graduated with a statistics degree and is on his way to work for the Arizona Diamondbacks in the minor leagues. But he has 15 guys, he said, that he has recruited to work with the UNC baseball team in, in statistics. Amazing. It's the rage now. Strike two to Russell. You, you're a smart guy, smart girl. You are interested in numbers. You're interested in sports. Um, you can get into a front office. Every major league team has now bolstered its analytics department over the years. The last remaining holdouts of the last few years are starting to build that department up. You, you really can't compete without one anymore. One two for Evan Russell and the pitch skips off the glove of Martirano. Solari takes second a wide turn. He will hold there. Well, they have Trackman here at UNC, and so that also gathers a ton of information. Spin rates, you know, launch angles, all these different things that you can get. Pitchers-wise, they can make decisions with analytics as far as, hey, use your curveball over your slider because it has better depth and it's a better pitch. You know, there's a lot of things that can be useful because of the information. Why not use it? Russell goes the other way. This should at least move the runner over. Dylan Harris has a big arm. He throws a hose to third, <laughs> but Solari is in there. Harris has showed off that arm a couple of times, even when he didn't have much of a play this weekend. Yeah, he, he definitely feels himself when he has to throw that ball. The other day there was a, a play that there was no chance at home, but he threw it almost from the warning track. One hop to home plate. Just kind of let people know I got a pretty good arm. Show it off. Why not? Why not? Michael Bush is right in front of the grass. Mike Freeman even with the bag. The corners are even for Jake Rucker. And a pitch in the dirt nicely blocked by Martirano. Yeah, and you'll hear that all day. Martirano has been... Very, very good behind the plate. You'll see the corners are in right there. You know, as a hitter, you can hit a ground ball up the middle, pop fly, you're going to score a run. And you also have to tip your hat to Evan Russell, who hit a fly ball to right field and allowed Al, Al Soleri to make it to third. That pitch skips away, and Solari will come home. Two wild pitches in the inning, and Tennessee scores after a leadoff walk. And that's what you have to do, chip away, and it's as a catcher. Martirano blocks the slider, but right here is a spiked fastball, and there is not much you can do with a spiked fastball as a catcher. Anytime you call a fastball, you can anticipate, you can do whatever you want, but anybody who says that you need to block a fastball, coaches that get upset about that, 
have never caught because that is one of the tougher things to do is, is to try. You just try to stop it any way you can. You see Martirano went to the backhand there, but blocking a spike fastball, unless it's straight in front of you, it's very tough to do. Why is that so tough? Well, just because you don't expect it, one. You know, breaking balls are a little slower. You, you expect it to come down in dirt. You should expect a fastball to be wherever, right, and react to it. But it's tough. I mean, it's a 94-mile-an-hour fastball that's just yanked, and it's not easy. Back out of the windup, Bergner throws strike one to Jake Rucker. Jake Rucker had the game-winning hit in the 10th inning. And game one today. Andre Lipsius led off the inning with a single. A few batters later, Ricky Martinez reached on an error. Key throwing error by Liberty shortstop Cam Locklear extended the inning. And Rucker made the Flames pay with a line drive single to left. Tennessee took a 6-5 lead into the bottom of the 10th, allowed a leadoff single, but survived as Redmond Walsh closed the game. Strike two, full count on Jake Rucker. Thrilling game it was in game one for Tennessee. Garrett Crochet and Redmond Walsh each threw three and two-thirds innings out of the bullpen. You will not see them in game two, you have to imagine. Ball four. Fastball away, second walk of the inning. And Rucker is on with one out. And that's what Tennessee needs to do. They need to be patient. They have to take it at bat by at bat. I know that right out of the gate they went down four, but chip away they got one run already obviously Austin Bergner is not commanding the zone as well as he could and so need to be patient first at bat of the game for Ricky Martinez starting shortstop junior college transfer first year at Sacramento State sophomore year Grayson College Martinez out of Pflugerville, Texas, has hit extremely well in non-conference play. 352 with a 447 on base out of the SEC. 230 with a 281 on base in SEC play this year, coming into the weekend. One hot pick by Martirano. Throw to first. He got Rucker. Wow, what a play by Brandon Martirano right there. That's a little Yadier Molina-esque. You pick that ball, they teach you at times when you when you pick the ball, just go with it. Make the throw to first base. Well he picks it, he goes with it. I mean that's a really, really good play. As as a runner, you know, you see the ball in the dirt, so you take that extra hard step and Martirano made Jake Rucker pay. The quiet fist pump right there. And he grabs a strike near the outside corner, one and two. Nice sequence there for Martorado. Loop to right field. Ashton McGee makes the catch. A run for Tennessee. Alaric Soleri walks, comes around to score. 4-1 after two. the winner of the Atlanta Regional. The 14 and the three seeds matched up, but Georgia Tech needs to beat Auburn today and then win again tomorrow, the number three overall seed. Auburn's Stephen Williams on an 0-2 count with two outs and two on in the ninth. Hit a walk-off three-run homer yesterday. Georgia Tech then trailed 7-2 against Coastal Carolina earlier today in a game the Yellow Jackets played under protest <laughs> from the middle of the game due to a long delay on a controversial balk call but Georgia Tech won the game 9-7 and the Yellow Jackets as you can see scoreless with Auburn right now that game on ESPN 3 in the app Ashton McGee tries to bunt his way on and he will courtesy of a fielding error by Will Heflin whose wild throw was backed up by Jake Rucker so McGee reaches on the errant throw by Heflin yeah, I think Heflin would want this back right here. He tried to Cadillac that that ball right there. You see he just kind of takes his eyes off of it and then make a play last second. Thankfully for that wall. 
Ashton McGee stays at first base, but got to look the ball into your glove right there. Here's Dylan Harris. Well, North Carolina has so many patient hitters. Such a great on base percentage among the top couple of teams in the nation in walks. Question where would the Tar Heels go for hits for RBIs outside of Bush Sabato? They've had a lot of good hitters, but could they maintain that depth, that offensive depth they found in the ACC tournament? And the answer has been a resounding yes. Harris, who's 5 for 10, grounds to first, and Tennessee gets him here for a double play. Nice job by Pete Durke right there. Get that ball. Throw to first base out of the gate. I didn't know if he would have enough time to turn this double play. It wasn't really hit too hard. Good job by Ricky throwing it right back and just how you drew it up. Double play. 3-6-3. Durke really the third string first baseman for Tennessee this year. Forced into the position due to a couple of injuries. Luke Lipsius, Andre's brother, was having a phenomenal season this year he got hurt early in the season and then Max Ferguson who took over took a pitch off the wrist against Kentucky about a month ago Dirk has taken over and had some big moments had a run scoring triple and the first game today going to on Brandon Martirano from Heflin yeah first base it seemed to be a bad luck position Luke Lipsius fouls the ball off his foot fractures it Max Ferguson gets hit by a pitch, fractures his wrist. Pete Durke has stepped in. He's done pretty well. Martirano, 30th round pick of the Diamondbacks three years ago. Lofts one to center. Jay Charleston. Heflin faces the minimum thanks to the double play in the third. He has stabilized this game out of the bullpen for Tennessee. First inning. Will Heflin has stabilized the Tar Heels. Tennessee got a run in the second. And this is a 4 1 game with a whole lot of time to go. 8 9 1 for the Volunteers here in the third inning. North Carolina win and in. The Tar Heels advance to the Super Regional with a victory. Tennessee needs to win today to set up a game seven tomorrow. Volunteers have to. Went three games in the final two days, four in the final three days after losing to Liberty. One o'clock tomorrow if there is a game seven, if North Carolina wins. And the Heels will find out if they're hosting next weekend or if they'll be traveling to Georgia Tech. Pete Durkay's first at bat of the game. RBI triple and the opener of What's become a doubleheader for Tennessee, two for five. And the one run went over Liberty. Turkey fouls one back against Austin Bergner. Some good memories in Super Regionals at Georgia Tech. That's when Tennessee in 2005 went to the World Series. Last postseason trip for Tennessee, 14 years ago. You were a part of that team. I was. Rob Fitzgerald hit a home run off of Matt Wieters in game one to win it, which set us up. Strike three. Durke goes down against Bergner. Did you say a home run off of Matt Wieters? That's correct. Home run off Matt Wieters. Wieters was catching. Came out from behind the plate to close the game. Was throwing 98 miles an hour. How about that. Rob Fitzgerald, who's now Dr. Fitzgerald, hits a home run and wins the game. And the next day, we beat Georgia Tech pretty good and end up in the College World Series. Strike into Connor Pavlon. Do you ever get called from behind the plate to pitch? No, 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 no. You have to throw harder than 84 to get called from <laughs> behind the plate to pitch. 
84, that was it for you? Yeah, I don't, well, I never pitched. I didn't, I didn't have good enough arm. Buster Posey. Well, I did, I did pitch in a game. That's what I was thinking. You threw in, shall we call it, mop-up duty in the majors? Yeah, I threw an inning in the majors, but that's not really pitching. That was just a, a mop-up. But, you know, there's a lot of good catchers. Buster Posey was a closer for Florida State. Matt Wieters closer for Georgia Tech. Connor Pavoloni out to right field. Caleb Roberts tracks it down two away. And that's what's fun about college, too. A lot of these guys can play different positions. You know, they can pitch. They can play positions. Right now, the pitcher, Austin Bergner, is having a pretty good inning. He's commanding his fastball. Struck out Peter Durke with a nice changeup. Now, four years ago, Sports Illustrated wrote an article on the 2016 Major League Draft. They named a few pitchers that had the potential to go number one, and Bergner was one of the pitchers they named at a Windermere, Florida. He was seen as an outstanding high school product. He was a 38th round pick of the Red Sox in 2016. His intention cleared to North Carolina and then drafted in the 32nd round by the Diamondbacks last year. Expect him to go again on Tuesday or Wednesday? Yeah, I would imagine that he would get a chance. I don't know if it's high enough to take it. Justin Ammons into left field. That's a one, two, three in it for Bergner. Eight pitches to get through Tennessee's eight, nine, one. College baseball will crown a new champion this year. Oregon State eliminated the College World Series starts 13 days from today. North Carolina hoping to return to Omaha for a second straight year. What is that feeling like? What is that thrill like to play in the College World Series? You were there 14 years ago. What is it like? It is unbelievable. Watching that video gives me chills takes me back you know I got to play a good amount of seasons in the major leagues and never got to the postseason for me that was probably the biggest moment in my career in the sense of you know you're playing in front of 30,000 it's it's the World Series I never got to play in a World Series or a playoff game in the major leagues two strike pitch Will Heflin to Caleb Roberts got him looking nice fastball there strike three but it's special, and to make it to call it the College World Series, you know, you're almost like a celebrity in a sense. You know, it's, yeah. it's, you live the big league life. That they treat you phenomenal. It was just such a cool experience, and an experience I'll never forget. Uh, unfortunately, we went 0 and 2, and we were the first uh, team to be eliminated. But nonetheless, we made it. Still have a text thread with most of the guys on that team and that's how close you become you know that's what happens when you when you go to the college world series and you play a team like that you're usually a real real close-knit team and 2005 in tennessee that's what we were one and one on dallas tesser what's the energy like i mean how does it compare to a big major league game i mean it's it's right up there i mean it is I got to play in the World Baseball Classic. There was there was a, a ton of energy. There it is. See you 14 years ago. Wow. Remember this? That's Travis Buck play at the plate, and then was able to hit a home run. You got James Atkins behind me there. It was a first round pick. Mike Kerfeld. Was that first picture your home run trot? I think so. Yeah, but but no, the the energy and the and the atmosphere is phenomenal. You go out there. I mean, there's 30,000 plus people. You, you, I mean, it's honestly, it's like one of the coolest experiences. If you haven't been there, you should go as a fan. If you're a player, you definitely want to make it there. I'm gonna have to do that. I've never been. It is that phenomenal. Would be, that would be fun. It's great, and you know, everybody. I, I dreamt of it as a kid. You know, you 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 hear Carl Ravitch, and you get fired up. You know, you you want to have that person announce your game. And, you watch highlights. You know, that's one of the coolest things. We talked about this the other day of, of broadcasters.
Carl Ravage, you know how awesome it was for me to be able to hear him when I'm playing in Omaha? I mean, I, I grew up watching this stuff. That's a moment that you can cherish forever in video. Yeah, I can show my kids one day that it actually happened. 2-2 Two -two for Dallas Tesser into left field. The first hit allowed by Will Heflin out of the bullpen. North Carolina had been 0 for 8 against Heflin. And the number 9 hitter Tesser deals a one-out single. Well, Will Heflin has been just terrific out of the bullpen. Came in with a 3-1 count on Caleb Roberts, threw a strike, then a ball. Since that point, only a walk and a single against. He did commit an error on a bunt from Ashton McGee. Has struck out a pair. But now, this is the second time through the order. And Heflin sees Michael Bush again. The likely first rounder tomorrow night. Dallas Tester has also been phenomenal down the line. How great has he been for this North Carolina team? Stepping up and supposed to be a defensive replacement. Hitting the ball around the park. Three for nine with a walk and a two-run homer. Out of your nine spot, you will take that any day. The question that you'd have is how much is Will Heflin spent in terms of energy how much does he have left this is his third day in a row throwing he's at 45 pitches he certainly doesn't seem gassed at this point and a quick throw to first and it skips away whoa tesser went tumbling over the fielder Durke, and the first base umpire rick allen had that for interference so tesser was going to second either way Rick Allen pointed right at Durke. Step off move. Just up the line to Tad and <laughs> hit the deck. <laughs> Pete laying out there so that Dallas Tesser can't make it to second base. You see the umpire right away say that is an interference. And Pete is all right. That first base bug. Jeez. Two fractures, Pete. You got to stay in the game there. Might be you next. You got eligibility left? Uh, I have one year, but not of baseball. I can come back and play football. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That could be a fun story. You'd probably get an E60 segment if you did that. Yeah, I would I would uh, be the, probably the best water boy on the team. <laughs> Equestrian, maybe? <laughs> So officially, Tesser to second on an E1. That's how that's scored after the interference. So in a regional of oddities, Will Heflin, the relief pitcher, has now committed two errors. You got to make sure right here to put Michael Bush away. There's no chance of a double play anymore. But you know who's on deck, and that's Aaron Sabato. And Bush is put away. Second strike out of the inning. Third of the game for Will Heflin. Nice breaking ball right there. The old lefty on lefty matchup. Will Heflin has that sidearm action right there. And that slider is real, real tough when it's lefty on lefty. It just continues to sweep across the plate. Big out. And I'll keep on saying this all night. There is a base open. And when this guy, Aaron Sabato, is hitting, I will make sure that I utilize it as much as possible. It's really amazing what Heflin has done in this game, coming into the first inning and shutting Carolina out. And if he can get Sabato and get this game to the fourth at 4-1 at worst, Heflin deserves... Just a whole sheet of gold stars. Strike one on Sabato. On or about the outside <laughs> corner. And all you see, you can you can read Sabato's lips just saying, come on. Come on. But 
It's strike one. You still got two strikes to deal with. So you got to lock it back in as a hitter. Sometimes you see a hitter get a strike call that bothers him, and then it affects his at bat. You got to step away, or regroup, and lock it in because you still have two more strikes. It's not like it was a second strike where he took the bat out of your hands. Aaron Sabato, after 14 games this year, was hitting 186, which is just about impossible to believe now when you look at his 341 mark. Leads the team in on-base, slugging, doubles, and homers. That was right over our head right there. Over the roof, yeah. You're still not getting a foul ball. I hate to break it to you. I know. I can. A man can dream. But you know what? Speaking about Aaron Sabato and his numbers, what's awesome to me is as a freshman you have the numbers you have but then you get in the conference and you think okay this is the competition goes up let's see what Aaron Sabato does what does he do he answers the bell and he hits better in conference improved his numbers in ACC play in one of the toughest leagues in the country Heflin's 51st pitch out of the bullpen is outside that's how you solidify yourself as a big league prospect when you get into the SEC you get into the ACC and all of a sudden, you put up better numbers in conference than you do out of conference. That tells scouts that you are a very, very, very good hitter. What you don't see in that stat line, the four walks that have been handed out to Sabato in this regional. Hitting 392 this year with runners on base. Ready for a 2-2. And Heflin will again stare back the runner, Tesser. Here's a throw. Tesser is safe. Those are attempts right there. Not only to keep the runner close, because on a base hit, you want to see if you have a chance to throw him out, even though there's two outs, but also see if you can get him out and not have to face a bottle with a runner on second base. Time's called. Here comes Tony Vitello with a 2 2 count and two outs. <laughs> this is some mad scientist work for Tony Vitello. <laughs> Strike away from getting out of the inning. He's going to go to Andrew Schultz. I've seen this before, and it's crazy, but also I've seen hitters. As a hitter, you imagine facing a lefty for the pitches that you just faced. You have two strikes on you, you haven't seen this pitcher, and you have to face him. That's a tough at bat. We'll find out what kind of a wizard Tony Vitello is when we return the hard throwing righty Schultz in the game. With a 2 2 count on Aaron Sabato, Andrew Schultz enters. We saw Schultz for Tennessee on Friday, two thirds of an inning, walked a batter, struck out two. Big strikeout numbers, big walk numbers, and a huge arm big time velocity up to 101 on a radar gun earlier in the season i'd imagine right here with two strikes you would probably see two breaking balls to try to put them away and if he puts them on is what it is but i can't tell you last year as a volunteer i, I saw this a couple times and it, i scratched my head and then i saw it work many times and for a hitter you can't imagine you, know, you face the pitcher now you have two strikes. You haven't seen one pitch from the pitcher. You haven't seen his breaking ball. You haven't seen anything. So it's not like you have any chance to really gauge what he has. And we'll see if it works right here. Will Heflin gets him to 2-2. And now Andrew Schultz will face Sabato. Two outs, a runner on. Dallas Tesser at second. And a breaking ball is bounced three and two. Do you think another breaking ball here? I do. I do. I think that he'll throw him another breaking ball. 
And if he walks him, I'm sure that they're okay with that. Danny Ceretti on deck. Sabato got under it. Martinez is out. Solari is in. Alaric Solari makes the catch. It works out. Schultz gets Sabato in a scoreless fourth. Play regionals, the Missouri Valley Conference. The Valley has three teams. Dallas Baptist, who is in the Valley for baseball, Indiana State, Illinois State, advancing the regional finals. Texas A&M, 3-2, two, two outs, down three, bottom of the ninth, before Bryce Blum hit a walk-off grand slam to eliminate West Virginia and the Morgantown Regional and UCLA lost yesterday, 3-2 to Loyola Marymount. The number one overall seed still alive. The Bruins beat Baylor. They face Loyola Marymount in a regional final game tonight. They would need to win that one and then win again tomorrow to advance to the Super Regional. Good news for UCLA. The Bruins advance. They'll face an unseeded team in the Super Regional round. Either Michigan or Creighton out of Corvallis. The bad news, they've got to win two more games. Austin Bergner, another long wait in between innings. And he starts Jay Charleston with ball one. Do you like that two-strike pitching change? It worked out. It's a different kind of game here in college. And I'll tell you what. Zabato just missed that fastball by Andrew Schultz. But nonetheless, he was out. And here you go, Jay Charleston, who was the spark plug for... Tennessee yesterday. Today a couple hits in the earlier game. Tennessee has a run but does not have a hit today. Until now. Well, look at you. North Carolina fans are not going to be pleased with you. Huh. As if I had that kind of power. Leadoff single for Jay Charleston. His fourth hit of the regional. And the SEC's best base dealer is at first with nobody in front of him and nobody out. And I imagine that he will be running early. Andre Lipsius. Second leading home run hitter in the league with 17. Had one in the first game today. Well, if Andre Lipsius decides to hit a ground ball to the right side, he just wants to go the other way, <laughs> he might be standing at second. Look at this shift from North Carolina. That is some kind of shift. What does this do to you as a hitter? Does this tempt you? Does this mess with you? Yeah, you know what? Honestly, sometimes people just say, oh, you know, there's all these guys on the other side of the field. Just hit it the other way. Well, if, that was, if it was that easy, people would not shift because guys would go the other way. Usually, you're going to pitch to Andre Lipsius so that he can pull it into that shift. Right there, you see a changeup. Right on right changeup. Usually, you want to get the hitter out in front, which is a rollover pitch. You would hit that into that shift. They don't just give you pitches to hit the ball the other way, but it is college, they do miss. Charleston's on the run. Here's the throw from Martirano. He got him. Charleston wants a review. If he's out, He'd be caught for just the fifth time this year, and Tennessee is immediately going to ask for an umpire review. Great catch and throw by Brandon Martirano, and we'll see right here. We'll get to see it. He's definitely safe. He's safe. So that will be overturned, and that's why he is so good. You watch this catch and throw by Brandon Martirano right on the money on a fastball, and he still beats it at second base. I think the umpire at second base might have gotten a little fired up, and made that call but it will be overturned Tennessee will use one of its two challenges and we expect this 
to be overturned, giving Jay Charleston steal number 41 in 45 tries. Great throw, though. You got to tip your hat right there. Just... You'll see right here that left hand gets in right before the tag. Hits the base right there, then comes the tag. And you know what? I love the I love replay. Kudos to the NCAA and, and, and getting replay into baseball at the collegiate level. It really has made a difference. And you know what I love too is it you can tell who the honest guys are right away because if you if you yes. if you point to the dugout and you make this whole big scene and it's it's not overturned, then they know. But you can't just fake it anymore, you know? Jay Charleston never left second. He knew that was going to be yeah. overturned. Yeah. It's a stolen base. 41 out of 45 for Charleston of the year. Tony Vitello wins his first challenge. He has one remaining, and umpires can call for a video review as well, and they control the video review starting in the eighth inning. Sorry, Brandon. Great throw, but Jay Charleston is just that fast. So two strikes on Lipsius. Austin Bergner after that wait. Misses with a fastball. You'll see too, Andre Lipsius with two strikes. He, he usually spreads out and just becomes more of a contact hitter. Earlier in the count, he might get a little bit of a leg kick, but right here you'll see he's a little bit more spread out. He has a good two strike approach. And what you need right here is to hit the ball to the right side, move that runner over. Just try to do so there, fouled it away. And you've, you know, spoiled a good pitch right there, but that's what you have to do. Right now, at this point, Tennessee needs to chip away, chip away. You have Al Soleri on deck, who can hit the ball and make things happen. Jay on third base. With less than two outs, you know that you can almost hit a pop fly at a shallow outfield and it'll score a run. Started every game at third base this year, Andre Lipsius, all 61. 17 home runs. And he'll wait on a look back and a very late fake throw by Bergner. Charleston extends his lead. And Lipsius goes down swinging. 93 miles per hour from Bergner. A huge pitch by Austin Bergner right there. Just power right there. Power fastball. Short arm. Little sink there at the last second. Got Andre. And we'll see. We'll probably see Jay Charleston here try to get the third base. With one out, he's going to try to see if he can get to third base and make it happen since Andre Lipsius was not able to get him over. He won't get a big lead right now because McGee is playing very close to the bag at second. There's Ashton McGee. Solari up the middle and through. Base hit, Alaric Solari. It will score Charleston easily. It's a 4-2 game. And that's why Al Solari has had the year that he's had. Because when he gets fastballs to hit, he does not miss it. You watch right here. First pitch fastball. Right back up the middle. And picking up Andre Lipsius right there. Jay Charleston scoring easy. All of a sudden, in a game where North Carolina scored four in the first, knocked out Tennessee's starter, here's the tying run. Ball one to Evan Russell. And if you think about it, how big is replay? Because if replay was not in college sports right now, it would never have had a run scored. 
Tennessee saved by the videotape. Russell homered on Friday. One of six on the year. And the ground ball to short could be two. So ready, McGee. And a bit of a wayward throw. Good hard slide by Solari. Well, that's what that shift does. It, it puts the second baseman in a weird position to catch the ball from the shortstop. And he's got the momentum going from behind the bag. It's, it's, it's a weird feel for them. And catches the ball and makes the, the throw offline right there. That's the one downfall about double play depth with the shift. Jake Rucker walked his first time. Pitchers have been feeling around for that outside corner in this game. Bergner found it there. If Austin Berger, Bergner can be on his game late in the year, who knows how far North Carolina can go. We did have burgers for lunch today. Maybe that's in my mind. <laughs> the Bergner bar in the hospitality <laughs> tent. Thanks to the folks in catering here at Chapel Hill who hilariously enough wear blue shirts with a Carolina blue logo that says Rocky Top Catering. Yeah. I don't know what kind of sign that is. Rocky Top Catering before North Carolina and Tennessee. Good take right there. Fastball up 0-2, but usually when the fastball up 0-2, shortly behind it comes a breaking ball. And we'll see if Austin Bergner throws the breaking ball, but you throw that fastball up there because if you're going to throw a breaking ball off of it, it's going to come out of that same plane. So we'll see if that's what they do. No, they went back to the fastball. Rucker held in about as long as he could there. Tar Heels are finally getting a reliever loose. 63rd pitch coming for Bergner. Breaking ball, nice take by Rucker. There's that take and there's that breaking ball. You know what? Austin Bergner's done a good job. He's really only given up two hits if you think about it. There's Hanson Butler who has also thrown in the first two days of this regional. Yes. I thought that maybe he would get a break today. Austin Love did a bulk of it in the bullpen yesterday. 2-2 two -two pitch. Hit on a hop to McGee. Four innings, two runs for Austin Bergner. But Tennessee gets another. Two in a row for the balls. 4-2 lead for North Carolina. We go to the fifth. Tony Vitello, the Tennessee head coach, joins us for the second time today. We're looking at... Will Heflin, the picture right there, Tony. Obviously, you didn't want to bring him in in the first. He pitches for a third straight day and did an amazing job neutralizing this lineup. What is special about that kid? You know, he, he's kind of, you guys mentioned it off the air, he's kind of got a rubber arm. He used to be a two-way guy here, uh, really good athlete up there. And he's an older, experienced kid, and he's got a lot of guts to him. I mean, he's one of our good personalities we got in the dugout in the locker room, and the guys are always behind him regardless of how he does. But what he did here in all three games that he pitched was phenomenal for us. What do you tell the guys? You go down 4-0, motions can tell you that we got to get back into this quick, but there's a long game. How do you maintain their focus? We tell them to play like those 2005 balls did when you were with them, buddy. So that and a little bit of just realize that it's been done to us, you know. We, we've given up a couple big leads in the SEC with those high-powered offenses, and we've also come back on some people, but it, it's too long of a game to, to get too overly emotional, and we just got to keep our energy going, and then we'll see where we're at at the end of the thing. 
Tony, thanks for hopping on with us a second time today. Take it easy. Watch those bugs behind you. I'll do my best, get a little spray, and hopefully see you guys tomorrow. Tony Vitello, if he sees us tomorrow, it would mean Tennessee has won, and it would mean a winner-take-all game seven between Tennessee and North Carolina. Tar Heels could advance to the Super Regional with a win right here, right now. They've not lost. Tennessee has. Andrew Schultz with a three-pitch strikeout of Danny Ceretti to begin the fifth. And that's what Schultz can bring to the table. He's going to throw in the mid to high 90s. He also can drop that breaking ball in there for a strike. He's got a good changeup as well. This is a this is a player who can do some things at the next next level. Zach Lingenfelter started the game. North Carolina hit him hard, but Heflin and Schultz have held the Diamond Heels down since then. One out of 12 since that four for six start, which includes a couple of walks. And the one for 12 since just one walk. That was from Bush in the second, a single from Tesser in the fourth. And that's it for an offense which has scored 23 runs in the first two days of this regional. That's why this is a long game. You can't get too excited. Even if you're North Carolina, you go up 4-0, you have to understand that there is still a lot of game left. You have to try to stay as even keel as possible. You see that fastball there at 97 miles an hour. That's why you get that first pitch swing by Freeman cheating on a fastball, and it was a slider. That's what velocity does. Andrew Schultz has only allowed a run in three of his first 25 games this year. The command the issue he's walked a batter in 14 of those 25 for the most part he has escaped his outings unscathed. Freeman a walk and a ground out and looks at ball three. That's really his only issue if you think about it. The arm the talent it's all there. A player that will be called his name will be called in the draft in the near future. He's got the full package. Once he learns how to control it in the zone, he might be the first vol from this team to be in the major leagues. That one was over Freeman's head. That was not controlled in the zone. No, and that was scary at that velocity. Missing there. That is not what you want to see. Mike Freeman has walked six times in this regional and been hit by a pitch. Between walks and hit by pitches, Ike Freeman has reached with 61 free passes this year. On base percentage is hovering near 450 for him. And that's a tough part, too, about this UNC lineup. You know, you have Andrew Schultz, who is big time stuff, but this team does walk a ton. And so this matchup could be tough for Andrew Schultz if he's not in the zone, because these guys will take their walk. Strike to Ashton McGee. How much does North Carolina walk? 363 coming into the weekend in 59 games. Only Central Michigan and Wright State have more. Third in the country. McGee muscles one to left field. Solari has space. Two down. If he's throwing strikes, he'll be very, very good. There haven't been many guys who have hit him. But that's it. That's the only real question. There is no question about the hair, though. That is no. some big league salad. 20 to 80, what do you got that hair? I got that at a 75. I, I'm with you. 80 is a special number, but... 75, that's a strong 75, that flow by Andrew Schultz. Alfred, a Georgia kid. That's a lion's mane right there. <laughs> that's an MGM logo. Oh, one Dylan Harris with a foul ball, strike two. And you see that 97, and he is filling up the zone. Dylan Harris, who's had a great tournament so far, got a knock base hit earlier in the game. You know he wants to take it out on the Vols. He grew up a Vol fan. 
Knoxville, Tennessee native. Junior college transfer from Walter State right in the backyard. Ground ball right side. Grabbed at second by Rucker. And the inning is over. The Tennessee bullpen has held it down. Four and a third scoreless for the ball relievers. Oh, in the regional, we're joined by their head coach, Mike Fox, with a 4-2 lead in the fifth. Mike, you had the bullpen going in that last inning behind Austin Bergner. He's at four innings, two runs right now. How long is his leash, and what have you thought of his performance today? I mean, so far, so good. Obviously, we gave him a run early there with um, you know some walks and wild pitches, but I think Austin settled in here, and um, first pitch strikes is the, is the key for him. So, uh, you know, so far, I like, I like the way he's throwing the last couple of innings. Coach, for a good team, you need them to buy in everybody from top to bottom. You know that that dose, I've heard about the dose getting <laughs> hit by pitches, championship belts. What does that do for a team? Well, I don't know what – it's not going to do anything right now with a guy throwing 98. I don't, I don't think you want to get a dose right now but <laughs> um, if you can help it. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, something Dallas Tester came up with. It just, uh, you know, you know, get on base any way you can, right? Love it, Mike. You guys have excelled at that. Thanks for joining us. Okay, thank you. Everybody buying in. That's why this team is special. 63 times they've been hit by a pitch this year. They've gotten on base with 381 walks coming in. 75 home runs. A whole lot of good for Mike Fox. His team is a win away from the Super Regional round. 2-0 for Ricky Martinez, number seven hitter, and a ground ball to third. Snared by Ike Freeman. Nice play right there. Two old pitch. Ricky chops it in the ground, backhand right there. And you see Ike Freeman is playing up just to respect the bunt. Makes a good play and a strong throw across the diamond. Moved over from shortstop this year when Danny Ceretti came in. He's got a third baseman's arm. Pete Durkay struck out on a fastball his first time. And Durkay sends one foul. Coach Fox is right, though. I would be scared to get hit by a 97 mile an hour fastball yes. right now. I'll ask you this because we asked Coach Fox about Bergner, and I asked him a two part question, so it's probably not fair of me to do that. He didn't tell us how long Bergner's leash was as North Carolina sends a couple of relievers out to the bullpen. If you're in the UNC dugout, what are you thinking right now as Bergner gets set for pitch number 70? Well, we've already seen Butler up, so it, you, it tells you that they're close. If anything happens, they're ready to go to that bullpen. So play it by ear. If somebody gets on base, you'll see somebody getting going on the pen. But if no one gets on, stick with them as long as you can. Good tailing fastball there, strike two, one and two on Jerkay. He's definitely in the, as his seven, 70th pitch, he, his velo is still there. He's in the low 90s, right? that pitch right there, 93. So it tells me that he's still pretty strong out there. Last two starts, four and two thirds innings, 10 runs. Jerkay in a right center field. And Bergner is hit four and two-thirds innings in this start with just two runs allowed. Nice running catch, Dylan Harris for the second out. I'm sure Tennessee wishes that Dylan Heron Harris was on their team. You know, right in the backyard, great player, runs it down. Reminds me of the center fielder in 2005, Josh Alley, around the same build, just just gamers. And if Harris and Jay Charleston were in the same outfield, that would be extraordinary coverage. Not that Tennessee's outfield isn't already very good with Solari and Ammons, but this kid can fly. One and zero on the nine hitter Connor Papaloni. Papaloni one hit in the regional. It was a grand slam yesterday to essentially put away UNC Wilmington. Freshman catcher who 
was splitting time with Landon Gray eventually took the job has some pop in his bat that's high for ball two just kidding that was a new baseball <laughs> want to make clear he uh, had a chance to get drafted and sign out of high school but you know he priced himself out of the draft because he wanted to come to the university but he was definitely being looked after and a Woodstock Georgia Pavilone takes strike two and it's almost looks like Austin Bergner has gotten sharper this inning. His pitches are on the corner. His velo is still there. He's ahead of the count. The Carolina bullpen has been quiet here in the fifth. Mm, close, but ball two. Even his misses are just off. He does not look phased at all. No, he doesn't. Even after all that stuff, it looked like there was a little tripping back and forth from the dugout, the umpire. He's locked in. See him right there. Get a little dirt. Get the new ball. Rub it up. And get ready to rock. Sixth pitch of the at bat. Bergner, Pavoloni. Pavoloni takes ball three. Right here, 3 2. He's thrown a lot of fastball for strikes this at bat. You see a breaking ball down and away. You know they don't want to get back to the top of the lineup. If I was Connor Pavoloni right here, I'd be dead red on a fastball. Fastball outside. Big take right there. Good plate appearance by Pavoloni. Third walk for Tennessee. Nice moonlight Graham shirt. I don't think he's too happy though. He looked like he was upset about that pitch. He should be happy he's wearing a moonlight Graham shirt. <laughs> What do you think of that pitch? I thought it was a ball. I mean, it was a good pitch. It was, it was, but you don't get a strike for a good pitch just off. Justin Ammons, a tying run, takes ball one. I used to ask umpires when I was hitting, like, where do you got that pitch? It's a good pitch. And I'd say, hey, a good pitch isn't a strike. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's just off the plate. You don't get, you shouldn't get a strike for a good pitch. If it's off, it's off. And, I've said it before, if it's off and the umpire is calling it off, just be consistently calling it off. The ESPN networks bring you every game on the road to Omaha. College World Series start in 13 days. Our regional coverage on ESPN2, ESPNU, SEC Network, and ESPN3. Until then, whip around coverage is also available through ESPN3 and the Bases Loaded channel. All coverage is available on the ESPN app. This is Robert Woodard, the North Carolina pitching coach, after ball one to Ammons. Out of the North Carolina bullpen, Hanson Butler, who apparently also has a rubber arm, warms up after throwing in the first two games of the regional. And as we spoke about the leash, as soon as somebody gets on, they're going to get that bullpen going. They will not allow Tennessee to get any momentum, especially now that Austin Bergner, the junior, is deeper into the game. Almost at 80 pitches, 79. Pavoloni, only one stolen base. He's the catcher. Not a threat to go at first. 
Hammonds, the tying run, does have a little bit of pop. Eight doubles, a triple, three home runs on the year. And a strike. <laughs> and the facetious, cynical clap. The Bronx cheer in Chapel Hill. I imagine that anything close this inning will be a, a loud cheer and anything that's a or anything close to strike will be a loud cheer and anything that's close and call the ball will hear some boos. But that's that's the atmosphere of college baseball. That's why it's so much fun. Crowds into it. Crowd is really filled in nicely here at the Bosch. A lot of Carolina blue and some Tennessee orange as well behind the first base dugout. Pretty easy to spot that orange in the crowd of blue stands out. That's for sure. Not exactly. Where's Waldo? <laughs> there he is. Ammons to center field base hit. And a pair of two out base runners. Bring up an interesting decision for Mike Fox. Will he leave Bergner in against Charleston who's single last time or is it time for the bullpen? I imagine that Coach Fox is going to make a move here. You see him starting to stand up. It's a tough decision. No motion yet. And the dugout shows you that it'll be Bergner against Charleston. Show of support from his heels teammates. Hands clapped together, knowing that this is probably the final batter for Austin Bergner. Here's a throw behind by Martirano and a good pick by Bush. You know what I loved about that picture with the, the dugout is all the players were clapping, but they were side eyeing. They were all looking to Mike Fox to see. <laughs> Is he going to go out there? Is he not going to go out there? Everybody's dialed in, but they're also. <laughs> it was almost like a, a worried look. What's he going to do? Show faith in his starting pitcher, Austin Bergner. Two time draftee, likely to be drafted a third time this week. Charleston with a number. Bergner is done with five. Nicely done by Austin Bergner. Carolina leads by two. Over in the Athens Regional, Georgia, the number four national seed, is getting pasted right now by Florida State. Mike Martin, who's going to go out perhaps on top after 42 years at FSU. His Seminoles a 9-1 lead after routing Georgia 12-3 yesterday. And that man, Mike Fox, is going to become the winningest active coach in Division I whenever this Florida State run ends. 2,025 wins for Mike Martin. Mike Fox, unless he surprise retires on us, will enter next year as the active leader among coaches and wins in Division I. But what a story that is. One last run for Mike Martin and Florida State. Seminoles, one of the last four at-large teams in the field, and they are blitzing Florida, Atlantic, and Georgia in that regional. Winner of the Athens Regional gets the winner of the Baton Rouge Regional. LSU, the number 13 seed in the driver's seat there. LSU Southern Miss with regional final game number one tonight. 99 on that last pitch from Andrew Schultz. One and two against Brandon Martirano. 7-8-9 for UNC. Just a cool 99. Cool 99. Yes, indeed. Nothing to it. It's crazy to just see where fastballs have gone to these days in general. I feel like you watch the big leagues. Every bullpen has somebody that throws 100. Hicks from the Cardinals up to 105. College guys throwing 99, 100 miles an hour. 
<laughs> been throwing 87 mile an hour sliders. I mean, what do you do with that? That's not fair. Yeah, you don't do anything. You you swing and miss. That's why Schultz is special. When he's in the zone, you go 99, and then you go that right there, 87 miles an hour at that depth. That's pretty good. I wonder if he cut his hair if he'd still throw his hard. Samson? <laughs> Took the word right out of my mouth. Biblical history here on the SEC Network. Caleb Roberts takes ball two. Walking a strikeout for Roberts. 3-4-7 with a double and a walk. Nice regional for the freshman. Caleb Roberts actually came to Chapel Hill as a true catcher. And if Brandon Martirano is drafted and leaves, or if Brandon Martirano leaves after next year, maybe Caleb Roberts is the catcher of the future for UNC. Ended up in the corner outfield. Right now he's going to end up on first after a four-pitch walk. And that's what we talk about. You know, you go an unreal at bat versus Brandon Martirano. Next batter, you walk him on four straight pitches, and that's... It's the biggest thing with Andrew Schultz is just the inconsistency. After throwing that fastball up, missing with the fastballs, I would imagine we try to take something off and throw a breaking pitch for a strike right here. To Dallas Tesser, he did, and he does. And that's what happens, you know, when a pitcher is throwing fastballs and it's erratic. If you throw an off speed, it slows down the delivery and under control, you get him back in the strike zone and then you can go back to the fastball. Strike out the first single in the fourth for Tesser. The big boppers are coming up. Michael Bush, Aaron Sabato, the next two. Tesser takes way high. I know Tesser brought that dose and the hit by pitch and everybody coming together, but I don't blame him getting out of the way right there. You take that one as a hit by pitch, you should win the championship belt for the year. <laughs> Throw out the rest of the points. Tesser in the right center, Jay Charleston on the jog, makes the play. <laughs> and that, that championship belt, I hope it has an ice pack connected to it that I can wrap around as well. Andrew Schultz is one out away from completing Two and a third scoreless after Will Heflin threw a three scoreless. When Zach Lingenfelter was lifted after giving up four runs in two thirds of an inning, this seemed like it could be another pummeling with Tennessee's bullpen having to bear the brunt of the work after a 10 inning game one. But Heflin and Schultz have been awesome. Here's Bush in the dirt and a nice chesting by Pavaloni. Great stop by Connor Pavoloni right there with that slider in the dirt. They have been great, but if there's somebody that can hit a fastball and turn it around is Michael Bush and Aaron Sabato, who's on deck. That's why Michael Bush is considered to be a top 15 pick possibility. 99, but not close, ball two. Here comes Connor Pavoloni. Good mound visit right here. You know, a couple balls in a row. You want to go out there and slow down the pitcher and just give a little break. Now here in the NCAA, there's a certain amount of visits that you can take. We just saw Richard Jackson stand on the mound, no glove in his hand, thinking about throwing for Tennessee. Now credit to Redmond Walsh and Garrett Crochet. Stretches the mind to think either of them would be available after three and two-thirds each in the first game, but 
Tennessee did only have to use three pitchers despite the 10 inning win. So most of the bullpen is available for the second game. That missed the spot at 96 3 and 0 for Michael Bush. Four pitch walk. Keith Law has Michael Bush 16th on his big board over on ESPN.com. First thing he says, Bush is a disciplined hitter. Two walks for Bush today. 58 on the year. Aaron Sabato did this yesterday. Similar to what he did on Friday. And Aaron Sabato can hit a fastball. The first home run of the regionals was on a 94 mile an hour fastball. First hit today was on a 97 mile an hour fastball. So you need to make sure that you're mixing in the pitches here because there's no overpowering Sabato. Hmm. Outside cornerish. Sabato's seen that before. Boy, that's what he just told him. He said that's twice. That's twice. And as a, as a hitter, you know, it's tough to just sit there and take strike one on another tough call. I would throw another breaking ball right here, too. Sometimes guys throw breaking ball, breaking ball, and it's almost an automatic fastball. Right, as a hitter, you know, okay, now he's, he's throwing two in a row. He's probably going to go back to his fastball. I would throw a third one here to make sure you keep him off balance. Which is why you see the breaking ball right there. Two on, two out. Big spot for Sabato. Two and two. Schultz came into the game with a 2-2 two -two count on Sabato in the fourth. The blazing Will Heflin. He threw ball three. And then he got Sabato to pop up to short. Fastball that Aaron didn't miss by much back then. No, he skied that fastball. He was definitely on it. See if he slowed him down enough to set bat to throw him a fastball. Sabato rolls it over. Lipsius does not have a play. The man with the most power in the stadium reaches on a 35-footer. Well, because of that power, Andre Lipsius is playing way back. And that allows for the swinging bunt about as perfectly placed as it can be. But that's what that allows. When you have that kind of power, the third baseman is going to be playing back. Aaron Sabato smelling that hit right there and just turning it on. I've, I've been there before. When you hit one of those swinging bunts, you're just trying as hard as you can to beat that up. Danny Ceretti struck out on three pitches against Schultz last inning. Ball one. Another mound visit coming. Connor Pavoloni pauses, <laughs> waits for Darren Hyman to brush off the plate, now returns. Guess he was just clearing space. No, I think he realized that he only ha oh, he only has a certain amount of visits, and the umpire probably reminded it, reminded him about that. 1-0. Ball two. You see Richard Jackson in the bullpen. He's getting ready. He's on the mound. He's not just looking down at the mound anymore. He's throwing some pitches. Big situation right here. 2-0 and for the freshman, Danny Ceretti. And a strike.
The all ACC freshman ready. Takes ball three. Spikes fastball right here, and you know, everybody will stand up and put the pressure on Andrew Schultz. And Schultz wanted it, missed the spot, 5-2 North Carolina. Tony Vitello is checking with the bullpen and he's ready to make a move. He's steaming. Tony's protecting his player right there. He got upset. He got upset. The umpire got upset that Andrew Schultz showed him up when he when he put his arms in the air after the strike. What Tony's trying to tell him is, you don't need to go and make a point out of it out there. Umpires feel like they have to make a point sometimes. And Tony's just saying that, hey, you, you have an issue, you tell me about it. You don't need to go out there and talk to the pitcher. I think to say Tony's upset is an understatement right now. He's been fairly reserved in our interviews and in most of this regional, but he is fired up right now. Tony Vitello brings in the right-hander Richard Jackson. Andrew Schultz is out. Richard Jackson is in. Tony Vitello still going at it. Big spot for Tennessee's bullpen in a three-run game. After this sequence, Andrew Schultz walking Danny Ceretti on this 3-1 pitch. You You'll be the judge. Yeah, I thought it was a ball. It was a ball. I thought it was just off, but you see Andrew Schultz throw his arms up. What I don't like is Darren Hyman walking to the mound to get on Andrew Schultz. You need to put your pride aside and understand that these are kids. That's what Tony's beef was. That's why Tony was so upset. Any head coach would protect their players. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. But now Richard Jackson on the mound, side armor, who's had a great season. They've dropped his arm angle down. See here, a 1.69. And this is a very, very big at bat. Ike Freeman, the cleanup hitter. Game still very much within reach. Tennessee put four on in the first. Tennessee, or North Carolina put four on in the first. Tennessee has chipped away. A run in on a bases loaded walk to Ceretti. Now Freeman swings and misses at strike two. You can feel the tension up here, I feel like, on both sides. You know, it's... it's UNC is battling right now. They've really pushed the run through with not much offensive action. Tennessee feels like this is a huge spot in the game where they need to hold them. Only six hits allowed in 16 innings for Jackson. So tough on righties. Freeman stays alive. Right on that fastball too. It's fouled back right there. Usually as a hitter, when you foul it back, pretty much straight back, you're on that fastball. Maybe look for a slider. And if they do throw a slider as a catcher, you need to make sure you're not on the corner of the outside part of the plate. You need to be as far as you can. Get in that other batter's box, make sure he finishes it. One, two. Slider taken. Good pitch right there. Throw too many fastballs in a row. 
Ike Freeman's taking some good passes at it. You have to be able to flip the script. Good take by Ike Freeman, though. Two walks in the game for Freeman. Three for six, five walks. Hit by a pitch in the regional. Bases full of Tar Heels. Freeman chases strike three. Jackson gets the job done. One in, three left for North Carolina in the sixth. Welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. We're in the regional final round of the Chapel Hill Regional. North Carolina and Tennessee, the winner of this regional, moves on to the Supers against the winner of the Atlanta Regional. Georgia Tech and Auburn have been in a weather delay for quite some time down in Atlanta. Georgia Tech lost 6-5 to Auburn yesterday. Came back from down five to beat Coastal Carolina today. So the Yellow Jackets have to win that game, then win tomorrow to host the Super Regional. If it's North Carolina and Auburn, then the Tar Heels would host in Chapel Hill. Tennessee hoping to render all of that moot. Vols need to win tonight and then force a game seven win tomorrow at 1 Eastern. Austin Bergner, five solid innings, back out for the sixth and blowing a fastball by Andre Lipsius. Yeah, Andre was trying to make it a two-run game right there with that swing, which he has the capable power to do. Gave Tennessee the lead in the first game today with a two-run homer against Liberty, and he's fence hunting again on strike two. <laughs> Listen, I'll tell you what, the junior Austin Bergner has looked much better as the game has gone on. I mean, even that fastball seems like it's gotten more life. Flipping the ball around, feeling good about himself. He has done a great job tonight. He's thrown past the fifth in seven of his 14 starts. Lipsius, Solari, and Russell, part of the order in the sixth inning here. Carolina's top relievers a little bit tired. Butler and Love each through the first two days. But this is also a show of faith in Austin Bergner from Mike Fox. 1-2. Strike. Three. Swinging. Lipsius has struck out swinging three times against Bergner. And Bergner is... Dialed in, fastball right on the corner right there. Let's go. He is fired up right there. Gets the ball for Mike Freeman. Bare hands it back. Think he doesn't know that this game can send them to the Super Regionals? Al Solari. He'll be a little too fired up on that first pitch. And Burton doesn't like that baseball very much. Austin Bergner at a three even ERA as a freshman, 425 as a sophomore, 548 as a junior after being such a strong high school prospect. The numbers have gotten worse, but the stuff, the potential is certainly still there. Solari, jam. Soretti from shortstop, two down. He's moving the ball everywhere right now. He's going away for strikeouts. He's coming in for ground balls. He's pitching effectively. He's, he's almost scrapped that breaking ball right now. Getting up to, he's at 90 pitches. Really no action in the bullpen right now. Nine days ago, Bergner threw an inning and a third. He just got shelled by Miami. Five hits, two walks, allowed four earned runs, three doubles, got just four outs in a game. North Carolina trailed 5 nothing. came back to win 7-5. Start before that, six runs, four earned, and three and a third against NC State. And here is Bergner erasing any lingering memories of those two outings with a great performance tonight. And that's a perfect pitch. And again, it's been all fastballs coming at you right here. And listen, he's got the stuff. He's stepping up tonight. 
That's what you need as a team. You need certain guys to step up when the situation arises, and he is answering the bell. Bergner to Evan Russell, 0-2. Last time he threw a fastball up like that, I thought he would be setting up a breaking ball, and he went back to the fastball. So he has yet to throw a breaking ball this inning. Will he save it for the 1-2, or will he come back with another fastball right here? Well, where would you look as a hitter? I would look for a fastball. Martirano wants something, whatever he wants, and he wants an emphasis. Fastball. Ten pitch sixth for Bergner. The ESPN networks bring you every game on the road to Omaha, starting with regional coverage on ESPN2, ESPNU, here on SEC Network and ESPN3. Whip around coverage also available through ESPN3 and the bases loaded channel. All coverage is available on the ESPN app. Austin Bergner with a towel on. Perhaps that signifies the end of his night. If so, it's a towel well earned. Six innings, two runs, and a three run lead for the Diamond Heels of North Carolina. Ashton McGee against Richard Jackson. Start at the top of the seventh, ball one. Tennessee needs at least four more to come back. Force a game seven tomorrow, Monday, one o'clock. Volunteers have been comeback kids. They've won nine games in which they've trailed entering the fifth inning or later this year. Today would qualify. And it all comes down to how much gas do they have left in their tank. You know, it's been a long day for Tennessee volunteers. If had an extra inning affair the first game. And I imagine that they're running on fumes right now, but. McGee, hard ground ball to first. Dirk K will take it himself. At what point do you feel like you're running on fumes during a long baseball day? I'm sure that you feel it more as a pitcher when you're out there more mm -hmm. than anybody else. You know, depending how this game goes, they'll crash for sure after this game. Connor Pavoloni has been behind the plate for now 16 and a third innings. How's he feeling? Yeah, I, you know, I'm sure that he feels good in the sense of running on adrenaline, but tonight, Whatever the outcome of the game, he will sleep very, very mm -hmm. well. And for a catcher, you know, these are tough, but it's pretty amazing what the body can do running on drowning. Two strikes on Dylan Harris, RBI single back in the first. And a really nice grouping of breaking balls in that at bat from Richard Jackson. Yeah, that arm angle right there, dropping down from the side. Little backdoor breaking ball strikeout looking right there. That was tough pitch. Hanson Butler is grandpa of the UNC bullpen, the fifth year senior. Richard Jackson is the one known as grandpa of the Tennessee pen, fifth year. Redshirt senior from Atlanta. Did not pitch much the first few years of his volunteer career. He has developed into a really effective weapon out of that bullpen. Well, you know, Frank Anderson told him, hey, if you want to pitch here, maybe drop down a little bit, see what we can do. And he said he wanted to do whatever he could do to pitch. And you see the numbers. Just a little outside on that one. Though. Just a hair. Brandon Martirano 0 for 3. 2 for 11. Home run, 2 walks in the series.
took another home run cut right there. Yesterday, that 3-1 count, he got ready, and he absolutely crushed that ball yesterday in the BP. This is another one of the North Carolina hitters that has above average power. Martorado has been drilled by a couple of 90 mile an hour fastballs this year in that forearm. That's why he wears the left arm guard. He's a trooper. He's also been drilled in the throat blocking the uh, ball. Yes. He's got a nice bruise in that Adam's apple. 2-2 from Richard Jackson. And the seventh inning is over in dominant fashion for Tennessee's Richard Jackson. Stretch time at the Bosch. Heels by three. Foul on in the dugout. It was not the goodbye towel. He's throwing six strong innings. Mike Fox sends him back out for the seventh. One of the best nights of Austin Bergner's career after two subpar outings, four and two thirds innings, the last two starts combined. He allowed 13 hits, walked for 10 runs. He's been so great against this Tennessee lineup, particularly the last couple of innings. Yeah, he has definitely got that confidence at fastball. Last inning, he was just coming right at guys, punched out two out of the three hitters. Jake Rucker will take a strike. Even a grunt now. I just heard a grunt up here. He is leaving it all out on the line right here. And it's definitely been a pretty unreal performance so far. Austin Bergner has been drafted twice. 2016 by the Red Sox, 38th round. 2018 by the Diamondbacks, 32nd. I'm sure for any scouts watching, thinking about Tuesday and Wednesday in the draft, they're liking what they're seeing from Austin Bergner. And I'm sure that UNC is trying to say if you are drafted high enough, maybe consider coming back for your senior year. There's, just, you know, there's something to be said about finishing up at school. You'll get your chance to play pro ball. And then anything can happen from there, but at times I think guys sign and maybe they're signing at a, a time that they shouldn't. Well, he'll have that decision to make, you would think. Somebody will at least take a chance on him. You get drafted twice, come back. Odds <laughs> are you're going to get... Drafted a third time by somebody. Yeah, and if you're getting drafted in the 30th round, I mean, you're not getting much money, right? You, maybe $10,000, if that, you know? And so that degree is worth quite a lot more than $10,000, and you'll get a chance to pitch again. 99th pitch tonight is a beauty. Rucker down on strikes, seventh for Bergner tonight. Austin Bergner Picasso is the name right now. I mean, this ball is painted on the corner. That is really, really special. And you see him, he is feeling it right now. Pitch number 100 coming to Ricky Martinez. Third time this year, Bergner's hit the 100 pitch mark. That's officially, he had a game at Clemson on March 10th. He threw seven innings. There was no official pitch count noted, but he threw 110 at Notre Dame on April 13th. 116 at Pitt. That was three starts ago. Eight scoreless innings in that game. A game that North Carolina, by the way, won 10 to 6, so things got out of hand after he left, and the Tar Heels are hoping that won't be the case tonight. Strike one to Ricky Martinez. Well, and if I'm Tennessee right here, I mean, you have to be watching. He's, he's painting the outside corner. At some point, you need to start either getting closer to the plate, maybe cheating the other way, diving out there, making him have to make an adjustment because right now he's just going up there and firing fastballs. Pop out in the ground out for Ricky Martinez in this game and a late time granted.
four years ago, Sports Illustrated in a Major League Draft preview for the next year named Bergner as one of a few pitchers with the potential to go first overall. That obviously has not happened, but you can see why tonight. Martinez goes the other way. Late break for Caleb Roberts. He does not get there. Ricky Martinez has two bases and holds there. His team high 18th double of the year. And right on cue, you know, if Austin Bergner is going to keep on going and throwing fastballs away, 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 at some point you got to make an adjustment as a team and realize what he's doing. Ricky Martinez does and drives the ball to right field. And Tennessee's back in action. And I'm sure here in North Carolina we'll see some arms get loose. Joey Lancelotti was just standing on the mound. He's gone and returned to the bench for the moment. The bench in the bullpen, I should say. Nobody is throwing right now. There's Lancelotti, 31. Hanson Butler next to him. Austin Love sitting down. Will Sandy's out there. Joey's got the glove. But nobody's throwing. This is Bergner's game for at least a little while longer. Peter K is struck out and flight out to deep right center. Strike one swinging. Still can fire in the off speed. 104 pitches deep. Yeah, well, right there, now you see a little bit of an adjustment. Austin Bergner's been fastball, fastball, fastball predominantly. 1 0 pitch, pulls a string, and you see Pete Durke out in front. Strike two, and then gasses it up, and he's late. Austin's parents are here tonight. Mark and Claudia up from Florida watching their son. At a Windermere. Looking for another out. It's punched out seven. And Durke stays alive on one two. Gone a couple off speeds and fouled off that last one. Fastball fouled it off the pitch before. You know, sometimes you get hitters in a swing mode and you throw a breaking ball down in the dirt and they'll chase it. Or you throw a fastball up in the zone, they'll chase it. You see Martirano right there encouraging him. One, two. On the inside corner, strike three. Turkey disagrees, but Bergner has his eighth strikeout. Yeah, and I'm going to have to disagree with Pete right here. This was a pitch that was painted, but that was set up because of the pitches prior, right? As a hitter, you get a breaking ball, you get change-ups, you get fastballs. All of a sudden, he comes in late right there, and he freezes you, and it, as a hitter, you think, Man, that was inside, and then you see it on replay, and you go, well, actually, it was a pretty good pitch, but that's set up because of the sequence previous that pitch. Bergner has struck out four of the last six hitters he's faced. Not fading as this game moves on. Connor Pavoloni takes ball one low. One hundred eight pitches. Bergner is eight shy of an official season high. And still nothing going on in the pen. So they're riding that right here. They're going to ride Austin Bergner. 
as they should because he's been very very good. And they'll talk it over. Here comes Brandon Martorano. Still nobody throwing in the North Carolina bullpen. Mike Fox. A picture of calm. For more coverage of the Division I Baseball Regionals and interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. Fly out in the walk for Connor Pabaloni, the freshman catcher. His one hit in this regional was a grand slam yesterday. Could bring Tennessee within two with a base hit. Another home run would make it a one-run game. To a count here, you got to be careful. You want to still be aggressive with the strike, but you got to make sure that it's something on the outer half of the plate. If he hits a home run, you want it to go the other way. And if I know that he went the other way yesterday for a home run, but you do not want to get to beat to the pull side right here. Bergner's 2 0 is a fastball on the outer half. And that's why he is. Been very, very good as of late because it seems like his control, as the game is gone, his control has become better. And so you can plan ahead with pitchers like that. In the air to right center, Dylan Harris is there. How about another for Austin Bergner? Seven innings, two runs. Away from a Chapel Hill regional win. Over in Athens, it is a final. Florida State, by a 22 to 4 combined score, has been the top seed Georgia yesterday, and today the number four national seed is out. So the Bulldog season is over, and Mike Martin, in his final year, will be coaching Florida State in the Super Regional against the winner of the Baton Rouge Regional. Most likely that'll be LSU, the number 13 national seed. LSU and Southern Miss tonight. LSU needing just one win to win that regional, that game just about to get underway in Baton Rouge. So the SEC with more than half the regional seeds, nine regional seeds, and Georgia as the number four overall seed is out on its home field. One and two now for the eight hitter, Caleb Roberts. Richard Jackson's face four batters, struck out three. And that breaking ball almost hit Roberts. Two and two for Roberts. North Carolina trying to knock out Tennessee. As Robert sprays it foul the other way, six SEC teams, by the way, of the top 16 regional hosts Vanderbilt, Georgia, Arkansas, Mississippi State, all in the top four. And then Ole Miss and LSU down the line. Those of you waiting for Mississippi State, Miami, that game will be joined after this game ends here at SEC Network. 
Foul away again. Roberts stays alive. Mississippi State just needs one win to win in the Starkville Regional. The sixth overall seed. Miami would need to win twice. Another SEC versus ACC battle. Again, that game streaming live on ESPN3 and the ESPN app. And it will follow the conclusion of this game here on SEC Network. 2 2. Roberts high and deep to right field. Justin Ammons has room, though, for the first out. Whoa. I thought off the bat that was going to be in the trees. Hung up there. Roberts with no home runs on the year. So maybe that is reason, but nice pass right there. And then Richards continues to throw the ball very, very well for Tennessee. The bullpen in general has been very, very good for Tennessee since the first inning. The launch angle was just a little bit off for Caleb on that last swing. And now Dallas Tester, that launch angle is off. That is in the seats. Richard Jackson has been one of those great stories in, you know, North Carolina has one as well as grandpa and Tennessee. This is Tennessee's version of the grandpa fifth year senior and just does everything right. And someone who's done everything right lately too is Dallas Tesser. He's been good. One for three today three for ten a home run and a walk in the series out of the nine spot. And a breaking ball in for a strike. Richard Jackson not distracted by the giant fluttering moth in between the pitcher's mat and home plate. It's a nice lot, amount of bugs here tonight. Mm -hmm. O2 count. If you go back to that slider, you need to make sure that you throw this way off the plate, which we will see a slider right here. I'd say that was way off the plate. Yeah, I would. I would also agree <laughs> with you that that was way off the plate. I mean, but 0 2 count gives you the opportunity to throw and waste a pitch. Obviously, you'd like it to be a little bit closer. We'll come back with the slider right here. It might have been closer, but it was still awfully far away. Well, and what that does is when you go as a hitter, when you go pull a slider that far away, pull a slider that far away, I need to know that right here, 2 2 count. There's a very good chance he's coming back with a fastball. And that's, you know, that's the advanced approach to mature approach. And it's tough at this level to see the game that way. But when a pitcher misses twice badly with an off speed, he's usually going to go back to the number one. Three, two. Lying to left center. Dallas Tesser out of the nine spot continues to torch regional pitching. He's got a double. What a pick me up for North Carolina over the last two weeks. No doubt. And what an at bat right there. Goes down 0 2, lays off two sliders, gets a 3 2 fastball, hits it into the gap. Stays on the ball. Real, real nice at bat by Dallas Tesser. North Carolina's 10 and 1 when Dallas Tesser starts. He doubles in advance of Michael Bush. That is, believe it or not, the first extra base hit for North Carolina tonight. After 16 runs on 16 hits, five homers yesterday. Remember the Tar Heels singled Zach Lingenfelter out of the game. Four runs, four singles in the first. Tesser has a double. Here's Bush, who's certainly capable of extra bases with a plum 2-0 count. And it's funny to think about it, a team that walks and hit a ton of home runs this season has been able to keep this lead by the single they've also walked though which they do very well seven walks 
Bush center field. Jay Charleston's got it. Tesser will hold it second. Action in the Tennessee bullpen. That's Will Neely who we've seen the first two days of the regional. All hands on deck tonight. It is. Everybody is down there. Will Neely warming up. He was their Sunday starter last year. Here comes Frank Anderson, Tennessee pitching coach. Frank's <laughs> probably telling Aaron Sabato, you could probably walk. No, we're probably going to walk you right here. Would you? I mean, I would. At this point in this game, if he hits a home run right here and they go up five, I think that makes it real tough for Tennessee. Tar Heels are 36 and one when leading after seven innings this year. They led after seven tonight. They're 36 and two in an oddity when leading after eight. Anyway, you slice it, they're good late in the game. And some insurance would give Mike Fox a little extra breathing room as he decides whether to bring Bergner out for the eighth or go to his bullpen. Joey Lancelotti's been throwing out there, so he's ready to go if needed for the heels. Sabato gets a breaking ball strike. What do I know? Just drop the old slider in there for strike one. Second Sabato to play at UNC. His brother Teddy pitched here a few years ago. That may be as fine as Teddy was, his largest legacy. 0-2. And, and if I'm a betting man, I'm going to say that Aaron Sabato was sitting on a breaking ball right there. Because that fastball was... Not a bad pitch to hit. In the outer half of the plate, and he took it and didn't even flinch. So I imagine that he was sitting on off speed right there. And now you have 0 2. Do not leave something over the plate. He did not, and Sabato held up. Oh, definitely if I'm gonna waste a pitch right here I just threw a slider that just missed on the corner I may go fastball off the plate away or fastball up Pretty good pitch right there I thought as you said earlier, a good pitch doesn't necessarily mean a strike. Yeah, he's been there though. That was that was the setup, the catcher set up in, and he caught it on the outside corner. I think that's the reason why they didn't get it. But two two, Sabato chases a high one. Ten strikeouts for the Tennessee staff. Top three for the balls coming up in the eighth. One rewarding performance. This was an easy pick. Austin Bergner allowed four earned runs in six of his last seven starts. Tonight, he allows two in seven innings. Four hits, walked three, struck out eight. Four of them in the last two innings. And a salute for Austin Bergner as the UNC junior pitched into the seven, pitched through the seven, and he leaves with the Tar Heels up three. Joey Lancelotti takes the ball. For North Carolina with the Tar Heels six outs away from another regional championship. Lancelotti, you see right here, great numbers, 50 innings, 53 strikeouts, less hits than innings. Another good arm out of the bullpen, 91 to 94 miles an hour with his fastball, his 82 mile an hour slider, 85 mile an hour changeup. And he's very, very much more of a fastball slider mix, more two-pitch guy. Not a ton of a command, it says on the scouting report. 
and that he's better out of the windup than the stretch. So that means Tennessee is going to try to get on base, which obviously they would anyways, but capitalize if they get somebody on base because if you keep him in the windup, he's a much better pitcher. North Carolina has brought Dylan Enweiler into the game in left field and shifted Dallas Tesser from left to right. Caleb Roberts is out. Top of the card for Tennessee, Abbott's Charleston Lipsius. If anybody gets on Solari. And there's the new left fielder, Enweiler, as he takes a look at ball one from Joey Lancelotti. Abbott singled in the fifth. Four out of 17 in this regional. Justin Ammons will test that new left fielder, Dylan Enweiler. He passes his first test. They always say when you come in, be ready because the ball finds you. And it found Dylan Enweiler right there. And that was a pretty easy one, just a lazy fly ball to left field. Nothing too crazy, nothing too tough. Jay Charleston singled in the fourth, still second. He was ruled out. The play was overturned on replay. He ended up scoring. That brought Tennessee to within 4-2. The Tar Heels got a run on a bases loaded walk in the sixth. And that's where we stand. The scouting report says 91-94. You saw that pitch to Jay. First pitch right there. 95 and that's what adrenaline will do too. That's a really nice slider. Yeah, after a fastball like that up in the zone, throw a slider, 1-0 count, show the dugout that you won't just throw fastballs when you're behind. And I'll throw that good slider too and so tough on a hitter when you're Ahead in the count, and the pitcher's pitching you backwards. One, two. Charleston holds up this time. Three straight breaking balls from Lancelotti. And I would imagine that you're going to see a fourth in a row. You know, that's something that relievers nowadays come out of the pen, and you see a lot more breaking balls. Two, two slider. And that's just this day and age. Guys throw in the mid-90s, but you come out of the pen, you're, you're not given any chances. You're putting guys away. You see this slider and backed up. Sometimes backed up sliders are the best pitches for a pitcher and the toughest pitches to hit for a hitter. You expect it to break and it never really breaks. Andre Lipsius is just happy to see anybody besides Austin Bergner who struck him out swinging three times. It's safe to say that I don't think he saw Austin Bergner very well. Safe to say indeed. Three swinging strikeouts will do that to you. Lipsius sees Joey Lancelotti a little better. And flops a single into right field. And hold on because Tennessee has Bash Brothers of their own. And that's Andre Lipsius and Al Soleri. Not as many home runs as Michael Bush and Aaron Sabato back to back, but Al Soleri has some power for himself. Solari has now reached base in 51 out of 53 games. Walk, single, ground out with an RBI on that single in this game. He's hit 11 home runs. And he smokes this ball into left, a base hit. Back-to-back -back singles for Lipsius and Solari. Once again, Tennessee will send the tying run to the plate. It's crazy what happens when you get a hit. Al Soleri with a hit, his first at bat. In the previous game, or this, or in the previous game, excuse me, and all of a sudden 
has continued to go. He got two hits last game. Single today. Single right there. Now Evan Russell. Sharply hit. Gobbled up by Bush at first. Lancelotti covers. Inning over. Lancelotti spikes the baseball for good measure. Analytics one right there. Shift. End of the inning. A Baseball Regionals is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Regional play in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Could be over shortly. Austin Bergner, a big reason why. Seven innings of two-run ball, struck out eight. North Carolina is three outs away from sweeping the Chapel Hill Regional. Beat the four-seed UNC Wilmington on Friday. And to come back after blowing a ninth-inning lead, win that game 7-6 in walk-off fashion. 16-1 over the three-seed Liberty yesterday. 5-2 over the two-seed Tennessee right now. Richard Jackson's 40th pitch in relief. Fouled away by Danny Ceretti. 3-4-5 for the Tar Heels. Ceretti the freshman. Then the juniors, Ike Freeman and Ashton McGee. 31 NCAA tournament appearances for North Carolina. They've won 13 regional titles. They're 40 and 9 in the postseason when hosting here in Chapel Hill. 30 and 7 as regional host. Two years ago, this North Carolina team was stunned, losing twice to the four seed Davidson. Last year, UNC hosted the Chapel Hill Regional, swept North Carolina a and and then Houston in a couple of games to win the Regional. Swept Stetson in the Super Regional. And the Tar Heels beat Oregon State in the College World Series opener, but lost to Mississippi State and Oregon State as the only ACC team in the 2018 College World Series. Danny Ceretti, I love watching his pre-pitch. I mean, this guy's routine is locked in. He goes tap of the bat. He'll look at the bat, tap his gloves on the bat, boom, boom, ready to rock. He's very consistent in his routine. He looks control in the batter's box. Muscle to the right field. Long run for Ammons. And a slide to boot with a nice catch. He's going to be a good player here for a while, but Richard Jackson has been very, very good. Justin Ammons coming in. A little slide right there. Nice catch. Ike Freeman. Two more walks. He has six in the regional. If this is the last time we see Richard Jackson in a Tennessee uniform, we are going to remember a boatload of good sliders. Red shirt senior dropped the arm angle, was a non factor in the start of his career at Tennessee, has worked his way into becoming one of the bullpen mainstays. He has struck out four in two and two thirds innings of relief tonight. What a job by this Tennessee bullpen overall. Especially after that first inning, you come in, UNC feels good about themselves. When you have a four run lead like that, sometimes it can get away in a hurry. Confidence does something for hitting. They could have really, really made Tennessee pay, but their bullpen has been great and shut them down. Freeman goes to right center. Jay Charleston's area.
Three Tennessee relievers have pitched in this game. Will Heflin, three innings, one hit, one walk. Andrew Schultz, two innings, one hit. He allowed a run, walked four. And now Richard Jackson, three innings, one hit, no walks. And let's not forget the work that Garrett Crochet and Redmond Walsh did. Three and two thirds for Crochet, three runs, only one earned, struck out five. In the opener against Liberty, Redmond Walsh, three and two thirds, one run. And closed out the game after blowing the lead in the ninth, getting into bases loaded, nobody out jam, and escaping it. This Tennessee bullpen all day has been superb. Want to know on Ashton McGee. No doubt they've been great. And for Richard Jackson, what's crazy is, you know, you go from a guy who's not playing, you drop down, you see his velo all the way up, his velocity all the way up to 90 miles an hour, and, and he may even, because of his success this year, get a chance at the next level. Maybe somebody... McGee on the ground a second. It's the last chance for the Tennessee Volunteers. Rucker Martinez Durke. The balls need three to stay alive. Regional Albert is in the driver's seat there with two wins. That game back underway after a weather delay in Atlanta. No score. Auburn and third overall seed Georgia Tech. Yellow Jackets need to win this game after a win earlier today. Then win tomorrow. North Carolina beat Georgia Tech in the ACC title game. That probably secured one of the 16 overall seeds, one of the 16 number one seeds for North Carolina. And has put the Tar Heels in the driver's seat and in position as a regional host to advance to the Super Regionals once more. Six, seven, and eight. Last chance for Tennessee here in the ninth. Jake Rucker had the game-winning hit earlier today to eliminate Liberty to send Tennessee to this regional final and Rucker pops up Joey Lancelotti's first pitch Dylan Enweiler in from left he makes the play for the first out of the bottom of the ninth. never a doubt on that fly ball there looked a little bit suspicious there at the end but the out nonetheless Tennessee needs to try to get their tying run to the plate. North Carolina, Lancelotti, stay aggressive. Make them beat you. Do not give any free passes. Got to be on the attack. Ricky Martinez doubled his last time. Lancelotti was brilliant in the ACC tournament last weekend. Eight and two thirds innings of one run ball. Pitched against New NC Wilmington on Friday. Only a third of an inning, eight pitches in that game. So he's the most well rested of any of the prime North Carolina relievers tonight. Well, he is juiced up. He is been sitting at 95. 1-1. One, one. Martinez chases strike two. <laughs> North Carolina, a champion of the Chapel Hill Regional last year. Went to the College World Series, the only ACC team to do so in 2018. Remember, this UNC team started four and five in the month of May. They committed 15 errors in nine games. They were sloppy. They were a mess defensively, losing 22 to two in the final two regular season games to North Carolina State. Since that point, they've won six in a row, an ACC championship included. Three and two for Martinez. You got to love Brandon Martirano's just fist pump, pumping the pitchers up. He is fired up, leader behind the dish. 
definitely partial to catchers, but he has done a great job back there. You see another fist pump. Come on. 3-2 fastball. Martinez can't touch it. And listen, I'll tell you what, if this is Tennessee last, Tennessee's last out, it's been a long time since Tennessee's even had an opportunity to be in the postseason. No matter the result, this does not sour the accomplishment of Tony Vitello, the second year head coach and of his Tennessee volunteers who have not been in this spot in 14 years. But right now, they're not thinking about any of that. Pete Durkay takes a strike. Stay aggressive in the zone right here for Joey Lancelotti. You got a three-run lead. Just come right at him. Martorano with a nifty frame job at the bottom of the strike zone. UNC is one strike away. Brandon Martorano's had to block a whole lot of pitches over this weekend. He's caught every inning of these games and every inning of nearly every game for North Carolina. He's hoping he has one more pitch to catch before a trip to the Super Regionals. 2-2. Two -two. Fouled away. He has blocked a ton of pitches. He's blocked them with his shin guards, his chest protector, his Adam's apple. He has been pretty good back there. But, you know, it's just encouraging to watch a catcher, you know, getting his pitcher through it, pumping him up, making the pitcher believe in what he's putting down. Pete Durkay and Tennessee are not going to go down without a fight. Six pitches. Not enough for the Tennessee first baseman. They haven't all year, and they're not going to do it now. 3-2 pitch. Joey Lancelotti is going to throw a fastball right here, come right at him. And he walked him. Durkay walks. That pushes the tying run to the on-deck circle. Tony Vitello just came out and had a few words for his on-deck hitter, Connor Pavelotti. And he's going to send up a pinch hitter, Christian Scott. This was Connor Pavelotti yesterday. Hit the grand slam to give Tennessee... Basically, an untouchable lead over UNC Wilmington. But Tennessee is going to go with Christian Scott, the freshman. Only 9 for 28 on the year, but 8 walks. And that on-base percentage is what matters right now. Exactly, and that's what this move is about. Christian Scott has been great at getting on base. And what the goal for Tennessee this inning is to get the tying run to the plate. Christian Scott takes ball one. No one is throwing in the North Carolina bullpen. This is Lancelotti's game. But he will get a visit from Robert Woodard, the North Carolina pitching coach. And they well-timed visit right here. And with that, the Tar Heels are going to get a reliever up. I would imagine it'd be Butler, one of their go-tos. No. <laughs> 
Austin, Austin Love, Love, who threw only 44 pitches yesterday. 46 <laughs> pitches yesterday. And he has thrown the first two games at his regional. Break glass in case of emergency. Austin <laughs> Love will be there. <laughs> But great mound visit right there by Coach Woodard. You have to be able to go and slow down. Joey Lancelotti, you can tell, got two outs and then started getting a little too amped up, missing with some pitches. Misses with that first pitch high. Good sign to go out there and slow him down. The freshman Christian Scott takes ball two. Is that what you're seeing here, a pitcher who's just a little too amped up? Yeah, it, you know, you have to be able to bottle it up and control it. You know, you get the two outs, but that third out is not easy. 3-0. and There's a reason why closers in baseball are closers. You can get as many outs as you want, but there's nothing tougher than that third out in the ninth inning. It takes a special person, not that Joey's not that kind of person. Scott shows butt to try to mess with Lancelotti. Takes a strike. Center cut. Yeah, and if, you know, I imagine right here, he will have the take sign, and it'll be Joey Lancelotti has a free pitch to throw a strike. It is low. And once again, Tennessee will bring the tying run to the plate. The zombie volunteers are still alive. This is Justin Ammons. Tony Vitello standing out of his dugout, staring into his dugout. He's not going to pinch hit here. He might pinch run. And that's what he will do. Max Ferguson, who was a starting first baseman, probably still not healthy enough to hit, is going to pinch run for Durkay. His run doesn't matter right now, but perhaps he just wants to avoid a force at third. Anything wacky? Yeah, I think that would be the only reason right here is, you know, you get a ground ball to the right of a shortstop. Maybe you try to get that force out at third, pay, at third base to end the, the game. And Max got, has the speed to beat it out. But. Justin Ammons has three home runs on the year. One for four in the game, four for 18 in the regional. Ammons takes strike one. First pitch changeup. You know, we've talked about it all night. Pitcher gets a little bit out of control with the fastball. How do you slow him back down? How do you get him back in the zone? With an off-speed pitch. Joey Lancelotti throws a changeup first pitch strike right there. Last home run, March 29th at Vanderbilt. Ammons fouls away, strike two. 96 from a revved up right arm of Joey Lancelotti. not juiced up right there. That was 96. That was the hardest pitch of his outing so far. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Tying run at the plate. Bottom of the ninth. Got him swinging. Lancelotti shuts the door. And North Carolina returns to the Super Regional.
What a job of Austin Bergner showing up today after the last couple outings. Wow. The Tar Heels are headed back to the Super Regional round for the second straight year. Their 14th regional title. And they are two wins away from their 12th appearance in the College World Series. Celebration for UNC. The Tennessee Volunteers pour out of their dugout. 